Welcome to the January 17th edition of Grid Life Digest, the weekly culture and gaming podcast and the number one well-fed podcast. My name is Noah Friskop and joining me is the MILF man, Micah Binfett. Yeah, what's up? I forgot what the the what was it what the well fed well came from. Yeah, but I'm, I'm digging it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's gonna it'll work for this week at the very least. At Shaw Doggy, Eli Shaw. It's your boy, and a very very special guest, Kyle Stevenson. Hi. Where golf might claps. golf claps all around? Where might people know you from? Uh, well, you might know me from my magnificent green beard on Twitter and Facebook. Um, I'm a uh, member of the Kind of Funny community, um, try to be as positive on Twitter and social media as I possibly can. Um, yeah, so I'm excited to be here, first off. Thank you for having me. Of course, thank you for coming. Um, first of all, I just I, I always love the green beard. It always just yes. brings a little bit of joy to my day. It's like yeah, <laughs> he, he's, he's living life, and yeah, like you're always a very positive, uh, outgoing person online, and it's just it's good to see more of that. Because we, you know, it's hard to escape kind of the baggage of negativity that exists online sometimes. So just even seeing a few people come up and, you know, try to highlight the good in the world, it always, always really good to see. So I, I personally yeah, it, appreciate that you do that. Well, thank you very much. I'm glad it's it's working somewhat. And uh, one of my goals for 2018 was actually try to do more podcasts because I've always wanted to do it. Yeah. Um. So again, thank you for giving me this opportunity to work on it and see if it's something I can continue doing. Yeah, it's well, something I, you just got to do. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like you're you're helping us out more, Kyle, because people know you your face more than ours. So you're that doing us a big a big favor. <laughs> well, one thing that that's common is we both have green in our profile pictures. Big fan that's of green. True. Big <laughs> fan of green over here. Then, Lots so of green. Maybe, maybe I'm like a secret agent, and I've been could be. in for such a long time with the green. Now, now yeah. all you need is like the the grid oh, life that. digest like logo shaved into your beard. Oh, <laughs> you know? That would be incredible. That yeah, no, that's <laughs> a little on that's the nose. I'd say <laughs> yeah. wouldn't recommend that whatsoever to anybody out there. I don't know. It'd be interesting. It'd be interesting. <laughs> Certainly. <clears throat> yeah, man. Yeah, go. Yeah, so I we met. At KFL three in person, and that was great. We did. Um, yeah. We had a little bit of interaction before then. Yes, a little bit. When I did that, uh, that big thank you video for kind of funny day. Was it 20, 2016? It must have been twenty sixteen or twenty seven twenty yeah. man twenty seventeen. Yeah, yeah. Man, time. I think we maybe we, we talked a little bit at during twenty sixteen at the end of it. Yeah, and then I was gonna um, do my own video, and then you reached out. You know, if yes, say like so, if I need help, um, I'm still working on that. Um, just life <laughs> cascaded onto me, so it just hasn't come out yet. I still have a very clear vision for it, and I will let you know yeah. if I need help. Um, Sweet, it's I gonna be cool. What you were, I know what you were planning on doing, and it's a great undertaking. So I'm excited for whatever you whatever comes of it. It's a greater undertaking than I initially uh thought. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. Just getting all the footage and finding the the different clips, whatever. But anyway, we can move on. So. Yeah. Every Wednesday, each of us chooses a topic for conversation, and we recommend a piece of media for the group and audience to check out. You can get this show on iTunes, Google Play, and YouTube every Wednesday, and be sure to check out gridlifedigest.com to see all the content in one place. While you're at it, follow us on all of our social media platforms, at Grid Life Digest on Twitter, and at Grid Life Digest Pod on Facebook and Instagram, so you never miss what's happening. A couple of announcements. The last of our Game of the Year articles have gone up on gridlifedigest.com for your enjoyment, so go check those out if you're inclined, or listen to last week's episode for the full rundown. And, like promised from last week, this is the first episode that we are breaking up topic by topic on our YouTube channel for short, digestible listening, if the long-term thing, long-term content isn't really your thing. Um, and a man once said, Fuck it, we'll do it live. Not a wise man, but a man. So in addition to being broken out, we are now live streaming on twitch.tv slash gridlifedigest plays if you want to see the raw, uncut version of the show while we record it. Give us a follow on our Twitch to stay up to date on podcast recordings and the out of the blue gameplay streams that we do every so often. So we will also be taking questions on Twitter and, and the Twitch chat and reading them uh, if there are any. So if you want to be part of the show, write in at gridlifedigest on Twitter and in the chat. So... Now that all of that is out of the way, I just want to know, what have you guys been playing? Eli, start us off. So, I've been playing more Mario Kart. Um, 
it's it's just a great game. I got back into it. I'm hooked again. Finishing up all those mirror races. Uh, I think I only have the the special cup to do. Um, yeah, so I'm trying to get that knocked out for. I, I don't know if I'm gonna attempt 200 CC, but at least mirror. I just feel like the maps aren't designed for 200 CC, so it's never really all that God, fun. No. Yeah. Um, Mario Kart, always a blast. Um, I'm down to play whenever. Like, literally, just call, say, Mario Kart, and I'm down. Because it's, well, that's going to be a game I play for years. Um, anything else? Uh, a little bit more of Wolfenstein 2. It's taking me a lot longer than I had hoped to get through it. But, it's meaty. Um, it's certainly meaty. Yeah, I'm enjoying every minute of it. A lot of fun. Yeah, uh, definitely savor it because it's fantastic. Oh man, incredible! Um, how about you, Kyle? What are you playing lately? Uh, so I I finished Wolf of Sun two last week. Congratulations! Uh, nice. Yes, it was it was quite the undertaking. Even on uh, one of the lower difficulty settings, it still kicked my ass. It does not mess around. <laughs> no, it doesn't oh, at God. all. Uh, d- definitely a couple moments where I wanted to throw my controller across the room. Uh, but that game is, is such rich storytelling. Uh, even when it's not like characters on screen saying it, there's the the world is filled with stuff. You just got to find it and read it, and it's it's so compelling. Um, so I finished that up. I, I've been going back and tried to do some of the uh, the over commanders. Um, yes, like side missions type deal. Uh, those are fun. Um, and then other than that, I what my plan this year is to play. A relatively newly released game, and then going back after I beat that one to like a game of my backlog. So I decided to go to uh, Darksiders Two. Oh, that's a great choice. Yeah, um, it was on PS Plus. So I kind of think a couple months ago, and I remember playing it for a little bit on PS Three. And then something happened where I, like I either something else big came out and I just forgot about it. Um, and so far, I'm liking it. Um, it hasn't really grabbed me yet, but I'm excited to keep going. It's it's very fluid, which I like. Yeah, mechanically very sound. Yeah. Um, I kind of had the inkling to go back and play it as well after Breath of the Wild because, like, Breath of the Wild, while great, it didn't really follow a lot of the same Zelda tropes, and I kind of wanted that formula again. So I was just like, huh, maybe I'll jump back into Dark Souls 2 and, like, that combat's great. The traversal is very, like, Prince of Persia-esque. Um, yeah. Very underrated, in my opinion. So, yeah, that's, a, that's an awesome choice. And it's not too like, long. Yeah. Yeah, and I like the gear so far. Yeah, yeah, and I that has that. I remember picking up all the gear and stuff and, and having the option to do use certain weapons um, when you can. Yeah, it just has that like moment-to-moment, like little like Diablo, like just incremental yeah. increases in your gear and your weapons, kind of customize what your death wants to look like and mm-hmm. feel like. Um, yeah, man. Dark Side is 3. Is For Dark Side 3 this year confirmed? Uh, it could. It, I don't know about confirmed. But okay. It, Seems like it might be heading that way. I hope so. Even though I'm not too uh, hot on the uh, new character design, um, mm-hmm. just because I think Death looks so cool and and War yeah. to to a lesser extent, yeah. but definitely I'm glad it's it Fury, exists. Right? It's Fury, yeah. It's yeah. It. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it'll grow on me, but right now I'm just like oh, I'm a little trepidatious. I'm just glad it exists at all. Um, after THQ went under, I was like, there's no way we're getting another Dark Siders, and then they came back. THQ Nordic, thank those guys over there, yeah. bringing back the double A mid tier game. Um, Fantastic. Any others? Yeah. Uh, and then I every now and again I play some uh, WWE 2K. Nice. Because uh, I also help uh, run the kind of funny subgroup, the wrestling group, kind of wrestling. Yep. And uh, we just finished up the Cool Greg Cup. Uh, we had a tournament <laughs> in the game uh, where you create your character, can't be over 90, and uh, we battled it out for the kind of wrestling champion and we, our first ever kind of wrestling tag team champions that's awesome um, i'm lucky enough to have won the tag title so i'm very happy i just gotta hold on to it um and that game is fun but it makes me miss the old ps2 style wrestling games the more arcadey shout out to smackdown Maybe. versus raw yes smackdown versus raw or know your role uh here comes the pain um those games had better storylines back then than this one does now in career mode and just take that career mode from back then and put it in with this new graphics, I'd be a happy, happy man. Match made in heaven. All right, so now we oh, have so the kind of wrestling tag team champion we on here with us. Yes. That's right. Don't mess with the him. Professor. The professor, Kyle Stevenson. Okay. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. 
Yeah, ki- wrestling I've never like really been into, but like just recently like, this year, like with heel kick and like seeing you guys out there yes. and the kind of wrestling, I'm like, I bet I could probably get into this if I had more time. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. it just seems like a fun community to be a part of. But yeah, I digress. Um, so I've been trying to continue my quest to play all of the Metal Gear Solid games in chronological order. Like I said last week, I finished three. I have since finished Peace Walker, not the f- real ending because it takes a lot of grinding and I just wasn't willing to put in that time. Um, but man, Peace Walker is such a, f- I, I understand why Greg Miller likes it so much because it's just, it's just really fun mechanically and like the story's goofy or whatever, but it's just overall as a package, just a ton of fun. And I, that's a game I can go back to time and time again. Um, I started five in ground zeros. That's probably, I'm just probably going to do act one as well on that. Not going to go crazy. Um, and then just for preparation for past that, I loaded up one on the PS Vita because technically you can't buy it on the Vita. You have to use a PS3 to transfer it onto your Vita for some some ungodly <laughs> reason. Uh, doesn't make any sense to me. You can play VR missions, but you can't play MGS1 on Vita just outright, which very strange. Just another reason not to like Konami. Um, but yeah. It, yeah, pl- d- it plays I like a dream. Why I would do that? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense, but it plays like a dream. Honestly, Ooh. might be the best place to play it in 2718. Almost did it. Almost did it. I'm still not still not used 2018 yet. Um, <laughs> yeah, it plays like a dream. Plays way better than the later ones because you're not really doing any of the first person like really complicated aiming stuff. So you can just you know mash uh, square to shoot or whatever. And man, fantastic. Yeah, what, still when I when I was playing that on Vita when I first played it. Um, Anyways, I, I forgot that you could switch over to analog and use the, um, you know, use the stick, use yeah. the analog. Instead, I was using the D-pad. I was like, oh, this feels kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. And I looked you, into the settings. It's like, oh, this is how you do it. <laughs> it you feels can, much better now. You can customize the controls really well. Like, I have the uh, item equipped map to the touchscreen. So you just, like, mm-hmm. you just click on it, and it's, like, super intuitive. And, yeah, moving the the uh, movement to the stick and it just all feels very very good so when i when i uh when i do wrap up five that'll be the next one on the list so just dive into it fully um i think that's it would you would you kick me off the show right now if i said i have never beaten a metal gear game no that it's as 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 quote unquote (laughs) popular (laughs) as it is it's still pretty niche very niche. <laughs> it's like it's a pretty like well known series, but yeah, it, it's it's it has its very hardcore fan base like myself. Mm-hmm. But no, not at all. I I don't right. I don't blame you in the slightest. I would recommend I trying. Two. I I played two. Okay. Like a ton back in the day. Okay. But didn't finish it though. No, I didn't finish it. No. I would recommend. Three, I think. Yeah, I think Snake Eater. I fell asleep. Okay. Oh my god. I was just about to say. I, I was I was literally just about to say. I recommend Snake Eater just to see. Yeah. But if you fell asleep, yeah. maybe maybe not a, a good or yeah, try it, it again. It was, it was too slow. It's very slow. It's meth- it. Yeah. it is methodical. Yeah, it's like if you have to shoot a gun, like you've already you've already messed up. So yeah, I can get that. Maybe you know, you can't. Not every game is for everyone. So yep. I get that. Yeah, no no worries at all. Um, good. diehard fan, but can't begrudge anybody for not being into it. Um, how about you, uh, Micah? What are you playing? Um, video so games. I haven't been playing. Yeah, I haven't played too much, but uh, on Monday I ended up playing a uh, Fortnite with uh, Max and uh, my cousin, and uh, I don't know. We ended up doing all right. I mean, I'm not the best at the game, but still, shit ton of fun. Like just going around and uh, and collecting uh, wood and mining and all that. So you have a uh, you can set up barriers so people can't kill you, or as well. But anyways, it was. Yeah, Max and then my cousin Jackson and I, and uh, we well, one of the games we got to like second place, but it, it was pretty much because Max. It was pretty much because of Max. Like, really? Uh, my, yeah, my cousin and I like died right off the bat. <laughs> Max so, is surprisingly amazing at Fortnite. Yeah, yeah, it's it, crazy. I, I didn't expect him to uh, latch onto it as much as he has. Like that, mm-hmm. I would not have pegged that as a max game whatsoever. But no, it's not. But for some reason, it is. But anyways, at the because I actually caught the footage on the Xbox. And anyways, what happened was, you know, the the circle keeps on getting smaller and smaller, and it's like pretty much as small as you can get it. And then they were up on a mountain, 
and Max was down below, and then the last team was above, and there's three of them because we, we were doing you know threes. Yeah, and there was a whole team, and then Max was at the bottom of the the mountain hanging out. And he's like, "Oh, they can't see me," and they're just like, <laughs> shooting like all hell, like, "Oh, where is he at?" <laughs> and then eventually, uh, it starts getting smaller. Then Max is like, "Fuck, I have to go up there." So he builds some stairs. He climbs up there, and then uh, all three of them like or. Three, the three of them were like caught off guard, and then Max kills one of them, and then the two just just finish off just Max, decimate him. I mean, yeah, at least he took out one. I mean, that's exactly. pretty good still. Yeah, we, we were we were we were pretty hyped. Like we, we were just yelling as you know hard as we could. Like, yeah. oh Max, you could do it, <laughs> do it. <laughs> that's awesome. But so many that, good that was, moments. So many good moments it, in that game. Yeah, it was. It's, yeah, I love I love that game. I mean, and it's free like you know you can't ask for any more than that it's free it's on consoles yep what what else can you ask for Mm -hmm. it's a better version of PUBG. (laughs) it actually works so at least a more stable version i've played it at the very least more stable (laughs) yeah more stable pretty excited for that like more stable city update with like the big like metropolitan area onto the map oh that sounds super cool like really uh tight corners and stuff that's gonna be fun um have you played any fortnite at all kyle no not at all Hmm. I've been meaning to, cause especially because you can download it for free. Uh, yeah. PlayStation was the yeah. battle royale part. Yeah. I've, 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 I watch like uh, Achievement Hunter play and for, and Funhouse when they do it. Yep. And it looks it looks like a ton of fun. Um. So maybe one of these one of these days I will jump in and try it out. Yeah. Like just get a, like get a group together. It's a lot more fun in a squad. And then yeah, just yeah. see how far you can get. And then you know laugh when you all get just get decimated at the end by yeah. these players that are way too good. Um. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for free, like you, it's it's probably one of the best free to play games I've ever played. Honestly, um, I kind of want to. Well, actually, I take that back. The rest of the game is also going to be free to play this year. Um, it was technically in beta this whole time, so it's going to be a pretty significant package when it's all said and done uh, for free. So look forward to that if you're into the uh, zombie survival section of the game as well as the battle royale. So all right, some good some good games being thrown around. Um, we're gonna move into video topics games. now. Video games, Sweet. triple A. All right, so <laughs> video games. We're gonna start with Eli. Eli, what is your topic? All right, so we're gonna start kind of heavy. Um, my topic is toxicity in the communities that you're like a part of. Um, so obviously, like we all kind of share the whole video game community, and then smaller subject subsections of that with kind of funny and everything um and like i really it i bring this up because like it's definitely the group that i most identify with like people who play video games and then people who watch kind of funny because i watch them weekly um but at the same time there's still a lot of issues with a lot of the people in these groups and it's kind of like you know this is the group this is the community that i totally identify with like more than anyone else but at the same time there's a lot of negativity going on and i just i I can't you know i don't want to be associated with that so i just want to talk about like what's what are your thoughts on stuff like that and um I don't know if you've experienced anything where you've come across like toxicity and you you kind of had to back away and like disassociate yourself from a community or something. Yeah, I feel like unfortunately like with the bigger a group gets, like it's just going to be easier and easier to find people that are negative or make it um um not I can't find the words right now, but they make it you make you not want to be able to participate. Um, that's just the way it is. Unfortunately, I wish it wasn't that way, but, um, yeah, there was a time specifically, I know we, since we all share kind of funny, I'll just use that as an example, but there was a time where I was really, uh, active, like across all of the, uh, platforms and just as, as they continued to grow, like I just found myself using it less and less and less because, um, the people that I did really get along with, uh, kind of, kind of fizzled out. I'm um, not entirely, of course, like I still go on the main Facebook group quite a bit, uh, but it's definitely not to the extent that it was a couple of years ago. So yeah, it, it unfortunately rings true. Like there's ev- eventually every group is going to have its unfortunate, uh, 
events or conversations that lead south. But yeah, and well, it's, it's sad, and it's sad because we definitely we all want to be there for one common purpose. Exactly, share experiences with like-minded people, and when it comes to kind of funny, um, especially with like the Facebook group uh, at Kind of Funny Life Three, uh, I was made a admin in the Facebook group. And so I get to see a lot of that firsthand, and um, it's definitely it's definitely a delicate process. Um, we there's a reason why we have so many admins. Is first of all we have them spread out around the globe, pretty much. So that way there's a, there's always somebody that can try to handle a situation. But we're so little. There's we're such a small amount compared to. The almost ten thousand members in that group. Yeah, it's impossible. So there will be, there will be times things fall through the cracks, and uh, I know personally speaking, we try our best to handle it the the best way we can because we want it to be the place where you're happy to be. And uh, I feel, um, especially with like the political climate and everything that's happened specifically with kind of funny in the last year or so. Yeah. It's been extremely tough. Um, I feel like we're getting close to getting back to that good spot. Uh, we're, we're, we're like right there, especially in the Facebook group. I'm not, I don't do Reddit. Um, so I mainly stick with Twitter and, and Facebook. Um, but yeah, it's definitely tough. The toxicity sometimes can be overwhelming mm -hmm. for sure. So, can are, are you allowed to like share any examples of what you've had to deal with? Uh, no, Here's I'm not what's go going on there. Super, super details. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I know there have been times where people have, um, you know, cursed one of us out in a message because we message them about whatever happened, and we get called uh, the name in the book, and uh -huh. man, people see us as the bad guys, and we're not really. <sighs> We're not the bad guys, or at least we try not to be the bad guys. See, that's what bothers mm -hmm. me. It's like it's it's really obvious that you guys are trying to do everything you can. Mm -hmm. Like I see that at the very least. Like I, I I am good friends with a lot of the admin team, and it's like these are not the bad these are not bad people. Like these are great people just trying to make a good place for us to talk and hang out and talk about video games and dumb stuff. Like mm -hmm. your work is not um, going unseen. I'll just say that. Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you. Yeah. And it's it's not like um, we're humans. Everyone has their off day. So yeah, there might be a time where admin, you know, goes about something in the wrong way. Of course. But we clear when that happens, which is very rare. Uh, you know, we try our best to what's the word I'm looking for? Resolve it as quick as possible. Yeah, that's all you really can do at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. But like it's like going back to the whole toxicity and in, in gaming communities. Uh, there's a reason why my main source of watching YouTube videos is on my PlayStation, because that way I can avoid the comment section completely. That's a really good call. I feel like that, yeah, I, that's like the worst part of I think the gaming community in general, especially on YouTube. Just see, reading the awful shit on my phone, like when I wake up and I'm watching a video, yeah, I just I can't I can't do it. Absolutely it's horrendous. My whole day. Oh, it's it's awful. So especially on a place like IGN, where they have so many people like commenting, and it's just an yeah. absolute cesspool. Like I, I I wouldn't say that about anything I'm intimately involved with, but like you just go onto IGN comment thread, it's like oh my, like seriously, guys, like are we not? At least mostly adults. It's kind of like a guilty pleasure of mine to read through those. Like I can yeah. see and that. Just cringe at everything. Yeah, as long as they're, as, long as you are cringing, because it's like some of these people, some of these people, I, especially it was like when you, they come up time and time again, it's like the same people. It's like if you hate them so much, oh, yeah. like just go find something that actually like makes you happy. And that's a great and, point right there, Noah. That's yeah. A fantastic point. <laughs> like, why are you spending so much energy on something you hate so much? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. There's going to be all a place for you. And something positive you know you're putting in all this effort into something that's just you like maybe put that into like something you want to do like oh next time you tell someone to go kill themselves like i don't know go and write a poem you know yeah. just something <laughs> or just house, go, go walking yeah just go like eat something introspect just think like 
is this really the kind of person like I want to be? Like I would I t- would uh-huh. I tell this to like a close friend or like a family member? Like mm-hmm. is that how mm-hmm. I want my public persona to look like? Like but I don't know some people and it's hard to get I, I p- past. Think, uh-huh. I I think as a has a lot to do with it is that it's on the internet. You know, you can say whatever you want over the internet because you're hiding behind your phone or your mm-hmm. your TV or your computer. You know, your there's anime picture or yeah, your anime yeah. picture. Your picture. <laughs> like, like yeah. they can't see you and you can't see them, so it's like, oh no, big deal. I'll just type it in and you know, tell you know, tell them something nasty because you know, if I was in person, I wouldn't tell them that. But you know, because it's over the internet, yeah, sure, why not? You know, that's a that's a big thing to do with it, and you know, just everyone's egos are immediately boosted because oh, they can't see me. I'm just gonna type whatever and I'll get away with it. Anime picture with plus I guess that's five why we charisma. Have, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess that's why we have people, you know, like you, Kyle, so you can stop these these internet trolls. Yeah, we try. The haters. Or at least, you know, try to educate. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, s- something mm-hmm. uh, you know, I was gonna I was gonna go into something and I, I stopped myself. Because I don't want to give anyone oh, dang. more ideas. So maybe when we're done, I'll let you know. That's but... a good call. That's a good okay. call. We'll stop the stream, no, too. Right we'll stop the stream, too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Cut it off. <laughs> Just right now. <laughs> um, anonymity, to me, is one of my biggest issues with the internet at large. That's why I try to like really be forward-facing and like, have my name appear in things. Even though it's like, yeah, you can be traced back mm-hmm. or whatever. Like, people can find you. It's like, people can find you all the time. Like, you, you have your phone with you. Like, people can find you. Um yeah. So I just try to like act on the internet like how I would face to face. Like I just I'm trying to hold myself to a standard and maybe hope one day everyone else will see that too. So like I don't have an anime picture <laughs> on my thing. Like I try to, you know, this is my, my face. This is who I am. You can talk to me. You can address me by my name if you have an <laughs> issue with me. I don't start fights or anything, but not that I have ever really had too many back and forths. Um, with people online besides YouTube comment sections for some reason I just get really riled up on YouTube comment sections because it's like what you're saying is so objectively wrong that I just cannot help myself but just butt into this conversation that I really shouldn't Um, this year and like early last year I've really had to like stop myself just like all right just do do not engage just let it happen and um, if it weren't for us running our own channel, I would still have uh, comments disabled entirely. I had a, you know, like Google Chrome plugin that just wiped it away. But now that I actually want to be able to see and read comments that we get on our show, like I kind of have to keep it, which then lets me see comments on other videos and which I regret. And I hate that I scroll and give them the time of day. Um, I hate that I do that, but I can't, I can't help it. Like Eli said, it's kind of like a guilty pleasure um, just to see what kind of just, just asinine things people are saying and i hate i hate that i like it so much so i'm gonna try to stop doing that but yeah it's it's so easy to get caught up in just the fervor sometimes it's one of those yeah, well, well, where something as simple as just don't give it an attention and it will go away it will fizzle out instead of just like you're throwing it, sticks on a fire yeah <laughs> it's such a simple thing to say and to think of but all it takes is that one person, and then it's just like a, a snowball rolling down a hill. It just gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and then you have a way bigger problem on your hands. Yep, exactly. And yeah, just do not engage. One, one, sorry, but anything. Well, anyways, one thing I want to say is, um, I noticed one thing that happens when you're ty- you're talking over texting or even through the YouTube comments, is you you aren't getting across the cadence. Like yeah. you'll say something neutrally. And then someone will take it up the ass. You Fucking know? asshole. Because, Why would you say that? It, exactly. Pretty much. Like, you'll say something just totally like, okay, hey, like, maybe even if it's like constructive criticism, and someone <laughs> will just take that to heart, and they will not be a happy camper. Mm-hmm. And that that's like just one thing I hate about the internet. You're talking to that person, that person in person, they could see how you're talking. And not get it by what you're saying because you can explain yourself right then and there, and you know that they are they they know how you're trying to say it, you know, because you have the expression on your face, you know, you have body language, you know, the, your t- tone of voice, yeah, your body language, everything, and you lose all of that once you start typing. It works, yeah. and then um, the thing with the internet is there's or even these big communities is there's so many people you're reaching to. So of course you're gonna come across the negative people, 
like the, there there might be millions and millions of positive people but then there's also going to be the you know several hundred thousand negative people stick out because you know we don't remember our good days we always remember our bad days like if someone asks you oh how was your day you know always a bad day you know but most of the time you, you don't remember your good days because pretty much every day is a good day you know if you think Hopefully. about it but your mind just automatically sticks just to the the worst day you know like you you had for some reason like i don't know maybe that's how humans are built but it's it, it kind of sucks <laughs> it does that's that's tone and like intent that's a big reason why i use like emojis and stuff it's like i just want my intent to be clearly illustrated like i i would mm-hmm. prefer not to i would prefer to just use writing but it's it's next to impossible to convey your message 100% accurately well and otherwise the thing with uh, emojis is they can also come off as like being like an like a, a sarcastic asshole exactly like you might put like a, a smiley yeah. face and some of you is like oh you're just being a dick you know yeah no it's a but double edged sword it's it, it's way too hard and it's really annoying <laughs> it's it's really hard especially because i am so sarcastic it's like i don't want to become i don't want to come off venomous um yeah i'm just like you know try to have fun or whatever and yeah like <laughs> i worry sometimes that what i say is being taken uh to heart and i don't know that's just like a personal like uh self image thing i guess just you know self esteem thing more like yeah. um so yeah i just try to be and, so crystal clear in that situation like if if you come across somebody and you read a comment or a tweet or something and you don't like the way it sounds just straight up ask like hey well, what do you mean by this don't mm-hmm. be afraid to to call them out on it and then they'll be like oh no it was a joke cuz the le- I, yeah. I've had it happen in real life before where friends in high school said something to me and I took it the wrong way. And then mm-hmm. I spent the whole day thinking this person had a grudge or something against me. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, I said straight up, like, what was up with that earlier? And they're like, oh, it, w- it was a joke. I thought, like, I didn't yeah. think anything of it. So please, if you find yourself in that situation, just ask. Use your voice. Mm-hmm. That's that's fantastic advice. Because yeah, I've yeah, I've, a, yeah, yeah I found myself like people you know talk to me. I've you know same situation and like it rubbed me the wrong way. And then it's like they totally didn't mean that, or they did, and I was right. Yeah. So yeah, you yeah just instead of just immediately rendering judgment on somebody's like actions, mm-hmm. like you know give them a chance, like have them elaborate. And if they still like double down on on being an asshole, then you know don't engage. And then yeah, just, that, it'll fizzle out. My, uh... That's my years of going to school to be a teacher knowledge coming into play. That's it's nice. very wise. <laughs> treat, treat them like kindergartners, sit them down, talk it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <good life. laughs> very just appeal to that like childlike part of the brain. Yep. Hey, yeah. just talk. To, what, what's going on? So what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very, very good. Very good. Uh, very good advice. But all right. So um, what? Would this then fit in with like you know the people who say oh you know you don't want to offend the the snowflakes of the internet or whatever I hate using that term but you know people throw that around you know is it like part you know part someone being an asshole and then part someone being a snowflake like I don't know it's it's so confusing to me like because at the same time you don't want to be walking on eggshells all all the time because you might accidentally offend someone you know even if it's just something totally unoffensive you're just putting your opinions out there. I mean, that's that's kind of like you know America. Like you, you have free speech. You can say whatever you want, but that doesn't me- necessarily mean you should. Yeah, you know like, what I'm saying? Yeah, you can say whatever you want. We can also criticize you for whatever you say exactly. entirely. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I don't know if you guys if you guys have heard the um, fireside chat between Colin and Brian Altano recently. Oh, yeah, it was that fantastic. Was that is a great podcast. Great. Pause this. Yeah, bro- go listen to that. <laughs> yeah. Because bro- Brian. And Colin talked out the whole thing that happened last year. And, and Brian straight up said exactly what you said. Like, if you're going to say something of that nature, be prepared of what's coming at you. Mm-hmm. And be be responsible enough for you to take, uh, take responsibility for what you said. Like, it's nobody else's fault that you said that. Mm-hmm. So take some ownership over it. Yeah, that was so a like, great show. Great show. So it's kind of like you know you have to 
if you're willing to dish it out, you have to be willing to take it in, you know? Because mm-hmm. that's all you could see about Colin was just him bitching about all the people who are attacking him. It's like, well, what did you expect? You know, you're gonna, obviously yeah. going to ruffle some feathers. And I mean, that's kind of part of his personality is to kind of get under people's skin. He, he loves to like poke. That. He loves to poke. I love yeah. Colin. Day one, mm-hmm. day one patron of CLS, I'm talking. But he loves mm-hmm. to poke people. And I really... Not to go too far into the about this episode, but I really liked how um, Brian gave specific examples of people who were deeply offended by what Colin said. Because Colin was like, people aren't actually offended. Like, it's just character assassination, which it was largely mm-hmm. huge, blown out of, por- of proportion character assassination. But there was people who, like, legitimately took issue with what he said, and I understand why. So I appreciated yeah. that Brian elaborated. It's like, hey, this is why people are so mad at you. Like, yes, yeah, yeah but... And they weren't yelling at each other yeah, doing it. They weren't. They talked about like adults. Exactly. And at the end of the day, if most of us in our community were grown ass people. <laughs> yeah. I one of the the least expectations I have for somebody that I interact with online is to treat me like an adult. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna treat you like an adult, you should treat me like an adult, because at the end of the day, we're all sharing the same planet. We're all old enough to learn how to type on a computer or on our phones. Hopefully. You should be able, hopefully, yes. <laughs> but, you, you know, you should give each other the respect that they deserve. Even if you have an anime profile picture. Yes. Yeah. But also... Some I people just like, like anime. With, yeah, yeah, no, I'm, some, I, some anime profile picture people, they're they're pretty great. Totally. No, yeah, no. I was so. to, totally just being facetious. Yeah. So no, many... I, know you I, I love it. Yeah, a ton of people. I Do what you want. Have, have your anime pictures because yeah. like some of them lot yeah especially if it's monokuma if oh yeah monokuma, no i can never i can never begrudge the monokuma pictures yeah. um at all <laughs> the the only thing that confuses me about these anime pictures on your facebook profile is like what happens when your grandma sees that you know like, oh. I, I i i'm i'm just confused by that like why would people do that like you're having your your whole family again, look at this whose grandma is on facebook lots of grandmas all of them really yeah yeah man. Lots okay. of grandmas. I, I have a grandma, and she's constantly on there. Like every like night before she goes to bed, she'll spend like two hours on the computer. Oh wow! Going, okay. Scrolling through Facebook. Like all right, okay. Yeah, it, it's a big thing with the baby boomers for some reason. They like you to should change your there. profile picture to an anime picture and see if she says anything. <laughs> yeah, just a, <laughs> see a if little, she comments on it. Little social experiment. Yeah. Okay. Or yeah. change your profile picture to a picture of your grandma and see if she knows. Okay, that. Yeah, <laughs> she's like, oh. love you too, honey. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. She probably she'd probably be a little confused, or she'd be yeah. like, oh, that, how sweet are you? I don't know. Stop. Like <laughs> yeah. Either one. I, yeah, that's a very interesting point. Yeah. I feel like anime pictures are more on home on like Twitter because like I usually I don't mm-hmm. interact with like family members on Twitter at all. But yeah, no, I was under the impression that Facebook was like almost even predominantly baby boomer thing um Mm -hmm. but i'd love to see like the metrics of like the age uh demographics that use it and like how much different demographics use it i'm sure that information is available somewhere i just haven't seen it oh yeah yeah they are lots of russia knows it oh russia russia (laughs) knows knows russia knows everything um about you and me i'm sure um are there any examples from like outside of like gaming like communities like have you had any specific um instances um on the internet of this negativity or is it have you found that's mostly when talking about games and stuff because I mean, uh, I mean, another huge uh, another huge community is uh the online wrestling community oh yeah a lot of crossover too yeah but specifically when it comes to uh professional wrestling fans on the internet it, it's it's pretty nasty and disgusting and just downright awful to read. Uh, there are derogatory terms every other word. Oh, uh, that's not good. No, uh, it, it's just it's straight up hate most of the time. Um, it, it's especially it. We're getting to a point where uh, it's not happening anymore. But especially when it comes to the women wrestlers, mm-hmm. uh, now. If you guys watch wrestling, I don't know if you do, um, but the women wrestling today is like one of the things I look forward to the most watching week to week. They're they're so, they're so good in the ring and their characters are great. 
and they just seem like great people outside of it. Yeah. But you, you still have those old, dirty old men who are going to say something crude and rude. And <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. That, that That's a very toxic community, which I don't really interact with much, mm-hmm. uh, especially now that that was like one of the main reasons um, uh, Devin Alexander White created uh, the kind of wrestling group. That's the main reason we did that was because we wanted it to be the, the kind of funny mantra where we're all friends. We all like this one thing. Let's talk positive about it. And for the most time, most part, it's it's pretty positive. There's some heated moments because it's the same thing with real pro sports. Like you, you have your favorite. And if someone attacks that favorite, of course, you're going to get heated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But for yeah. if if you if you're listening to this and want to see what the wrestling community online community is all about, just proceed with caution because it can be real nasty. Like you just That's... brought up, you just brought up like actual like other sports. Like yeah. um, that is oh, like yeah. one of the worst like real life toxicity that I see of just like you know the the tribalistic nature of of sports fandom. It's just like at work, it's like you you can't bring up the wrong team and like you will get like lambasted or berated by someone. I hate that stuff. But what are you yeah, saying, where, Eli? I apologize. Where, I was just gonna say. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, I was gonna say. Where are you guys from? I'm from Idaho. California, California. Washington, Washington. Okay. Yeah. Washington so State. As a as a New Yorker, uh, I get heat all the time because I'm a Mets fan. Yeah. And. God, it, God help you if a Yankee fan sees a because <laughs> they'll take every jab at you. Or even with Yankee, Yankee Red Sox fan. Oh man! Ouch! Yeah, no, that one's that one's infamous, infamous rivalry and of there. Course, and of course, being a New York fan and interactions with any type of Philadelphia fan, <laughs> they, they will come to blows. Yeah, that, it's not like down. that. Um, so I'm from San Francisco, and then so we have the Giants up here, um, and then the Dodgers, huge rivalry, and then you know they're in the World Series this past year, and there's people out of nowhere that I never would have guessed, you know, even cared about baseball, are like, you know what, fuck the Dodgers, and just like, <laughs> out of nowhere, like, wh- why are we watching like these two teams play that, like, all over the place and. Like, we really have no connection to them, but everyone in San Francisco is just like, fuck the Dodgers. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> just, yeah, what are you doing? Ri- that rivalry is, like, notorious for being, like, violent and hate spewing. Like, I I, oh, yeah. I feel like every other season, uh, a Dodgers fan gets, like, really badly beat up in the parking lot by a Giants fan or vice versa. Like, I feel there's always a story with the Giants and Dodgers. That's so See, shitty. Some of the Dodgers had over here. I like fear for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like it's incredible that anybody is hurt over sports. Like mm-hmm. it's supposed to be something that we all bring us together, but instead it's so divisive. It's like why does it have to be this way? But it's so ingrained at this point that it's like you can't change it now. It's like it's just <laughs> gonna keep continuing. The next generation is just gonna pick up on the traditions of you know whoever whoever was paying attention before, prior to it. But man, yeah. I, like, I, I I think it has something to do with uh, the just this like tribalism you feel like it's almost like an instinct thing. Like you uh, you feel like you're so invested in this brand or this team or whatever that you have to defend it no matter what. Like it even spreads to like the console wars or whatever, where you will scroll down Facebook comments or YouTube Sony comments. ponies. Yeah, you know <laughs> Xbox. You know, oh, we have the the the, the you know the 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 Xbox and you have the PlayStation. You suck and Indie Station Four. Ex- exactly. PC or, Master Race. PC Master Race. Oh yeah, PC Master. That's like one of the. Oh my gosh, I despise PC Master Races. <laughs> Like that is a group master of people, races. master races. I coined that. I'm oh, sure like someone that. else has too. Um, that is, that is a group of people that you just are so dense mm-hmm. in their tribalism that you just cannot get to, you cannot get through to them. Like they're <laughs> like their, their ivory tower is so high up that yep. if you even try to engage with them, like they just shoot you down on site. And I hate that. It's like, can't we all just enjoy games? Like, yeah. can we just play on what we want to play on? And going back to the sports thing, something I find, really cool about it is like you said um we're invested in our teams mm-hmm. when i talk about the mets or I talk about the new york giants i talk about uh, somebody a team that i really enjoy 
I always refer to it as we. Like, we won yeah. the game. Yep. Or, <laughs> uh, we had a great outing. Like, our pitch, our pitcher had a great outing. Like, yeah, yeah. I have, <laughs> like, I'm a part of the team. We Even though you aren't actually together. on the field. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I'm not on the field, but I especially – I'm notorious for, for doing that with the Mets because – Especially with baseball, it's such a long season. It's 162 games, and Ouch. God willing, they make the playoffs. That's another month and a half of games. Mm-hmm. It, it, you go on such an incredible journey with them, and I've been a fan of theirs for all my life, pretty much. So you feel like you go through the heavy losses. You, you, you're you with them on the highest of highs, lowest of lows, and you feel part of the team. So I know I'm, I'm guilty of saying we all the time. <laughs> and my friends are like, you had nothing to do with that win yesterday. I said, I don't care. We won. It's real to me, damn it. <laughs> I'm right exactly, there with them. Yeah. If I didn't watch, they wouldn't have won. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, I feel like sports teams are just as much their fan base as they are everyone playing at this point. Yeah. But so, yeah. I mean, in a way, I guess you would be part of the team because, in a way, like if you're watching this game, like you're you're paying for it, kind of like because yeah. they they're thriving off of the community sort that surrounds them. You know what? I mean, what, did you guys? I don't know if you saw the the Vikings game before we started this, mm-mm. the playoff game. Just the clip that? at the end. I need to watch the clip. Okay, yeah. Oh, the the, cl- the end of the game is fantastic. Like that was gave wild. Me, gave me goosebumps, but. After that score, the NFL has this real weird rule, even though there's no time and they scored a touchdown, they were going to win anyway. You have to complete the field goal, the extra point, yeah, before the game can end. So uh, the Vikings offense is on the field, and their quarterback, Case Keenum, started doing the skull chant, where they just kind of clap above their head. Oh. And then the whole arena was doing it at the same time. Chills. Oh, it, it was such a great moment, and I'm so happy for Vikings fans or or and pretty much any fandom that can get to that point and have a, a moment like that is great, unless you're the Patriots or the Yankees because you've had <laughs> plenty of <little> things. <laughs> you've had <laughs> enough. Give share a little exactly. bit exactly. <laughs> but it, it's yeah, like that sense of community just next to each other in the stands, and oh, it's it's so great. I could I could talk about my love for sports forever. It's a shame we didn't have. Uh... Max, Max on here because he actually cares at least oh, about or Emma. Yeah. yeah or Emma it's like like I am not the sports guy to talk to like I I'm pretty much the only thing I watch is local college football just because that that's the team that I have quote unquote tribal association with and with uh, here, here's another interesting thing uh it's not really like a pro sport but the Olympics are coming up oh oh yeah mm-hmm. I'm excited for that holy crap you guys watch the Olympics you have like a sense of pride for USA or mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's cool. But... It's it's definitely cool. Yeah. I don't. I I might try to tune in a little bit more this year. Honestly, mm-hmm. yeah, because it's I, cool. It's cool. It's like it's a thing that just like humanity does with each other. Yeah, and it's we don't get anything like that. Yeah. I I feel like yeah, anyone can watch the Olympics and appreciate it because they're kind of standing for your country or you know for yourself. Yeah. Like it's super neat to see, or even going back to like the. Summer Olympics, where you know Michael Phelps has like the flag over around his his yeah. neck, or just stuff like that. It, like it's super badass. Like we can kind of forget like what's going on in the world right now, and just kind of like have like a fun like competition. Yeah. And like I don't know, it almost doesn't seem as like bad. Like the there's not as much toxicity going on with it mm-hmm. is what I've noticed. Maybe it's because there's not a bunch of asshole Americans involved. You know, I mean there Might are, be. but n- not yeah. as many. Because you're involving the whole world, mm-hmm. and like they, they well, maybe because yeah. like you're in America, so everyone's rooting for America, like pretty that's much. Mm-hmm. You know, imagine we, going to like France or something, being the one guy that's rooting for yeah. America. Like, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> yeah, we, we can't hear them talking shit about us. <laughs> that's Traitor. almost the same year, like when the FIFA World Cup comes every couple of years. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, like, everyone's all about Team USA with soccer, myself included. But other than that, I don't give a shit about soccer. 
that would offend Max. Yeah, he, <laughs> even <laughs> yeah, yeah, he he is like he is a diehard soccer fan. But uh, yeah, yeah, all, all all this morning he was sending messages about the soccer game he was watching, and it, to uh, me it just looks like a bunch of gibberish. Like, I don't know how to reply to this. I'm sorry. I'm glad for you. I'm glad. Or half <laughs> he was like half excited, half pissed off. It's really yeah. the line is very thin when it comes to soccer, especially Arsenal soccer. Um, from what I've seen from him, it's like I, I, I. Congratulations! But, I'm sorry. Like, I just have to yeah. preface both each time he I, I brings think, it up. I think, for, yeah, for him, like he's kind of just using this to like let us know what's going on. Or at least for him, like he just wants to kind of get it off his chest. Like, I'm fine with that. I'll read it. I'll read it. I'll check out the clips he sends me. Like, good for him. I'm glad. I'm happy for him. I wish I had. You know, I wish I was mm-hmm. as, as engaged in sports as as him and a lot of people are. I just cannot cannot do it. Mm-hmm. For whatever reason, mm-hmm. but maybe it's just because I don't have, you know, living in Idaho, we don't have, you know, a big NFL team or anything like no. a big team. Like yeah. Boise State University is like that's our team. Like that's the, oh, that's that's the top. <laughs> that's our top. Like we got, we don't have much. That might be a big part of it, but it just and then like yeah, I'm, I'm sure Idaho they probably pay attention to more of the teams around you guys. You know, like maybe uh, the Seattle Seahawks or just stuff like that. You it's know? a melting like, pot. It's a total melting pot. It, like you go, yeah, you go around. It's like there is no like consensus. It's mm-hmm. like everyone liking all kinds of stuff. I'm like, I don't know where to, huh. I, don't, I don't know which bandwagon to jump on. That's <laughs> There's too many. Yeah, it's kind of a mess. I'd, li- I'd, I would really like if we had like a state team. Like that would be a lot easier to root for. I just don't have mm-hmm. that, so I don't have that connection. So I don't feel the need to give a shit mm-hmm. <laughs> at all. I mean, it, yeah, that's mostly because. Idaho doesn't have too many people and there's yeah. not as much money going on there. As, well, like, we're, you know, at this rate, at the rate that we're Seattle. growing, at the rate we're growing, it's going to be a different story in a few years. Like we just yeah. keep getting people. I'm just like, go away. <laughs> like we have, <laughs> like we have our utopia here. Leave us alone. Yeah. California's catching mean, on to that now. And it's stay away. <laughs> yeah. Stay out of California, please. <laughs> they don't too, need many any more sports teams. too many sports teams. Yeah. Give us one of your sports teams, California. But, yeah, I mean, what, what, how many how many sports teams does California have? Like four four football teams now. Um, is, that, is that correct? Because they have the Raiders, the Giants, Chargers, the yeah. Rams, Niners. Well, Raiders are leaving. Yeah, Raiders, know, Raiders are, leaving. are leaving. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, well, that's at least one. There's a little at victory. Least four. At least four. So yeah, four. That's basketball. So you got four another four basketball teams. Yeah. But that's just where all the money's at. So of course they're gonna have all the teams there. Cause what? There's like, like thirty million people in California around there. It feels yeah. like it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it feels like just like thirty million in San Francisco. <laughs> just walking in there. Yeah. <laughs> Stresses me out. <laughs> There's like hardly any room to breathe. Speaking of San Francisco, are you going to prom, Kyle? Uh, I'm planning on it. Same. Uh, same. I'd lo- I'd saying? really love to go. It's just a matter of money. Yeah, and that exactly. green beard. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I'm gonna be a little bit more on brand. Blue, sweet. Yeah, or... I'm going. I'm prime blue. I I said I'd do that for PSX. Pink, and I ran out of money in time. Oh, oh. not pink. It's kind of funny. No. Games Ooh. pink though. It's on yeah, brand. That works. I could, yeah, but I, I'm more of a blue guy. All myself, right, so. all right. It'll look. It'll look good. Yeah. It'll look good. Yeah. So are you taking anyone, Kyle, or just no, showing I'm up? I'm going. I'm going St- stag. Stag. Baller. Yeah. <laughs> Baller. Baller. I brought my right, beard. This is open invitation. If anyone wants to, you know, propose for a dance yeah. Well, yeah. Or a, <laughs> hit up Kyle. Send me a proposal video. <laughs> I'll make a proposal video just just because just because I want to make a proposal video to somebody. <laughs> just make it out to like the event itself. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna go. Yeah, just to to anybody who will receive me. <laughs> here is my proposal. <laughs> It's not a bad idea. Yeah. It's not a bad idea at all. We'll just go as a group. But it'll it'll be fun. Yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah, I'm gonna have a great time either way. But that's what I hated about you know going to prom in high schools. There was this pressure, like, oh, if you if you don't show up with a girl, like, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> so yeah. that, well, that's kind of what I hated. Is, this is a great great question to ask. Is how do you guys feel about the whole prom theme? Oh geez, I was skeptical at first. I love it. Skeptical, okay. Yeah, me, me too. I, I was very skeptical. I'm like, what? You're gonna take a bunch of nerds and like make them dance? Like, <laughs> it, it just, in my head, it doesn't work. You know, like all these people probably hardly even went to prom. Like, I technically didn't go to my prom. Oh, I didn't go to prom. 
like so why would we want to go to this one but yeah. second I chance it, it, yeah that's yeah there's less pressure i feel like and yeah, then it, it's, it's and, gonna be a just a mm-hmm. big party mm-hmm. yeah with, with the best friend it's gonna be like a giant community event okay yeah i mean the, the more you guys are talking about it the better i feel about it but at first it was just like i wasn't i wasn't sold on the idea at all it just kind of felt like kind of funny doesn't want to put on a big show anymore so they're gonna throw out a prompt so i have to put in as much work you know like we ran a material so we're gonna throw out a prom like so people can have fun doing this instead but it's a lot of work it's a lot of work to plan an event like that so i totally understand yeah i totally understand that too it just kind of felt like i don't know kind of be a little more honest with us like oh we we didn't want to do much work this year so we're doing this instead well i know andy had said there's gonna be a a live show component so he's gonna play guitar At least boy orgy. I'll be happy. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna ha- yeah, get us some boy orgy. I'll be happy. I'll make the trip just for that. <laughs> just the same song again. It's like we're back yeah. again. <laughs> boy orgy's back <laughs> again. But yeah. So uh, internet toxicity. Or yeah, internet toxicity. toxicity. <laughs> hopefully it won't hopefully this toxicity won't be a factor in kind of funny prom no. twenty. No, hopefully it won't. Yeah, yeah, no fights, please. Nope. Yeah, that would no, no that would be terrible. Just oh, baby yeah, making. Yeah, no swirlies. Oh, there's gonna be there's gonna be some love making before and after. Hopefully and not between like a bunch of guys, but hey, if that's your thing, I you mean, know, go for it. <laughs> if that's the case, Willie won't be a fifty yards from the establishment. Like he's not gonna <laughs> he's, he's not gonna be anywhere right? in the premises. <laughs> we love you, Willie, but Yeah, we love you. You messed up. Um, I should have gone. You should have gone. Even if the ratio was fucked up, you should have gone. The ratio was fucked up, but just for the story at the very least. Yeah. Um, just say that you went to one. Yeah. For your grandchildren. Yeah, for your grandchildren's mm-hmm. sake. Yeah, they would have loved that story. Grandpa like, Willie, <laughs> what's an orgy? <laughs> well, son. Well, there's about 50 men. Uh, three, got three, <laughs> three, girls. three girls, yeah. It was very strange. I got, like, the left pinky toe. Uh, ex- anyway. Anyway. Any uh, final examples of toxicity on the internet or otherwise? I, I think we're pretty spent on this topic. Okay. Yeah. Kyle, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't be toxic. Be a better person. Yeah, no. Be the person. Don't be a dick. Be the best person you want to be. All right, Kyle. What is your topic? Oh, okay. So uh, I was going back and forth between a couple, and um, I woke up yesterday, and a miracle happened. Oh, damn. Oh, okay. So one of my biggest. Uh, joys in life is game shows and all right i don't know if you guys get uh game show network as a channel of uh, familiar yeah. very much do yeah. very we, familiar we had we had that taken away from us for about three years oh that's a shame I how woke up one morning I, we, I woke up one morning and it was no longer available to watch no and, uh, <laughs> so, no more steve harvey <laughs> exactly i don't know uh, so yesterday morning I woke up and and there was actually it was on and it's been on ever since. Fingers crossed it stays like that. <laughs> so so my question is uh, your experiences with game shows as you were a kid. Uh, what what is a game show that you feel you would do great on? Ooh. Like oh what, I wish I had prepared for this. Oh dang that's a good one. Oh man yeah guys grocery Wait, so we'll games. Go, I, I, Oh, grocery games? That's a good one. Yeah. I, I forgot about that one. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I have a couple that I keep going back and forth with. I love Deal or No Deal. Oh, yes. That is okay. mine. That is my answer right there. Howie, okay. hit me up. So that is such a, a, a simple show to understand. You pick a case. It has money in it. You just pick other cases to eliminate and hope you have the million dollars or whatever it is. And no matter what, uh, you win something. Exactly. Unless you play it stupid and say no deal every time, <laughs> and then you're you're down to like a dollar and a hundred bucks. Mm. So like, I mean, yes, it's more money in your pocket. A dollar is a dollar. That's true. After taxes, um, like you you're they're, you're gonna end up paying them. <laughs> yeah. uh, deal no deal is great. Um, uh, when I was little, because I'm pretty sure I'm older than all you guys. Yeah. Uh, I was, there was a game show called Supermarket Sweep. Um, where is that what I'm thinking of? What were you? Were you the one that said guys' grocery games? That was Noah. Yeah, because I just like Guy Fieri. Okay. I just want to be around Guy Fieri all day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, supermarket sweep, and it used to come on before another game show called Shop Till You Drop, 
where you would uh, have to run through the supermarket and grab certain items off the shelves. Mm -hmm. and certain, some items would give you extra money, um, and you would have to like run and find like a cucumber. Uh, but it's got to be a special cucumber in the pile or whatever. I, I just loved that game when I was a little. Um, but the game show I think I would do really well on is uh, Price is Right. Oh, yeah. Dude, Ooh, the, gotta, the, the, the game right. show. Yeah. Just, just, to, just for one time, just for me to say $1. Yeah. Just, I, I, my, my bid is $1. $1. Yeah, yeah that'd, be, that'd be amazing. Yeah, I'm just like going through. I haven't like watched a game show in so long, but like I have consumed a lot of game show in my life. Um, yeah. Probably my favorite is uh, Cash Cab. Big Cash, Cash Cab, Cab fan. Um, no. I would probably I do. Forgot about that. I would. <laughs> me now today, I would probably do really well on it. Um, not yeah. when I was watching it. Um, it's also, it's actually coming back. There's new episodes. Really? Okay. With the same guy. Color the same guy. Yeah. Color oh, me. Yes. Color me hyped. I'm all about it. Yeah. Um. Something I would be terrible at, but also would get me close to Guy Fieri, is a minute to win it. Absolutely yes. terrible. I would be terrible at it, but still, yep. just to give me that chance. I, I run a summer camp for kids in, during the summer, and uh, one of my days is I do minute to win it games. I just do the minute to win it games. That's awesome. And just see the kids try to complete these very simple tasks <laughs> in a minute. Yeah. They get so frustrated with it. It's kind of entertaining. No, that's, that uh, sounds extremely entertaining. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a good game show. I wish they would bring that back. Man, a lot of, lot of, lot of, re so, a lot of rest in peace uh, game shows on this list. Yeah. So what what counts as a game show? You know oh. when you see it. Okay. <laughs> okay. On, it either is, I would say, I don't want to put too many parameters on it, but a chance for you to win a prize of some sort. Is so, Survivor a game show? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I would like totally Survivor. Say, uh, think of Survivor as a game show. Okay. Huh. Damn. I haven't thought of it as I such, but it kind of is. TV game show. Yeah, it's a kind of a hybrid. I'll allow it. I'll allow it. I, I, I think I could probably do Survivor, like in yeah. real life. I, I think I'm a relatively fit human being, and like I, I know some survival skills. You're gonna have to you roof out in the wild. Build a shelter. Yeah, you can build. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can build stuff, okay? Like I, I'd be a very valuable tool to have. Put like that I, Fortnite I, skills to exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Go back to Fortnite. You know, I could use my IRL riffing skills. You know, uh, and uh, construction skills mixed with Fortnite, and I, I'm a very valuable tool to you. Like you're not going to get rid of me, right, no matter not, what. We're not eating Micah on the island. We're gonna. No, you're not. Yeah, you're, I'm the last one to eat. <laughs> Survivor's a good choice because I love the uh, the mental game of it. Mm -hmm. Like, like the having to make alliances and and play your cards the right way. It, it's it's very good. It's a great game show. Because because that's that is very battle royale esque. Yeah, you know? you're going around and making alliances. Like, oh, okay, you and I aren't gonna you know eliminate each other just without AK 47s yeah, just yeah. without killing each other. That that's pretty much. We'll what make it, it to the is. final two, and then three mm -hmm. steps, and then draw. Yeah, <laughs> it's also like one of the only game shows that have like power up items. Like you can get an immunity idol, and you're safe. Oh yeah, it, it, it's like the star in Mario. Like you're good. <laughs> so that that's pretty much like the most video game esque thing you could have in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But but I remember watching that show with my grandma. My grandma been fed. I've talked about her several times. Anyways, what up, grandma been fed? Like, yeah, ups. Every I think it, when does that show come up? It was like every Thursday. My yeah. grandma and I would watch that. If I was over, we'd be watching it. And I don't know. It was it was so much fun to watch it with her. Like we were rooting for this, you know, certain guy, or we want to get this guy kicked out because he's a jerk, you know. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. it, it, like I don't know, it was kind of like a moment for me to bond with my grandma over this fucking stupid show. <laughs> But yeah, the, the reality game shows are great. Like you have Survivor, mm -hmm. you have Amazing Race, which is that's you, one. yeah. Um, and then another personal favorite of mine is Big Brother. Yes, that's my choice for show that I want to be on. Yeah, like Big legit. Are you familiar uh, with it, Noah? Um, you know, I understand the premise. I haven't actually sat down and watched more than probably fifteen minutes of an episode. Just uh, wasn't for yeah. me. It's intense. I imagine it is. Yeah. I imagine it is. Um, you mentioned Steve Harvey earlier. We can't do a game show topic without mentioning his his interpretation no, of Family Feud. Like I love 
Steve Harvey Family Feud. Just when he just the stupid answers he hears, and then he just like lambasts the them thing. for like half an hour. Like it's so good, <laughs> it's so good. One of my favorite ones is the uh, uh, oh, what was the question? Something the end or comes after pork? Yeah. And and the guy said cupine. <laughs> and, and, and I, I watch it every every month or so because it's so it's a good answer. I gotta find that. Yeah. Oh and god. Steve's just like, wait, what did you just say? Yeah. And the and the guy without any hesitation, cupine. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? Porcupine. Porcupine. Oh, what the yeah. fuck! <laughs> oh, now I'm pork. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. That's, that's really so good. Creative. I need to find that clip. You need to give oh, him points yeah. for that, though. Roll the clip. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if, if we can do that, but oh man, <laughs> there's so many. All right, the, uh, the Nickelodeon game shows. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Nick Arcade, Legends of the Hidden Temple, Guts, Double Dare. There's so They're many. All awesome. There's so many. Uh, the weakest link. I don't know. You guys might be too young. I remember that one. The mean old redhead lady who would just yeah. yell at you, and <laughs> that was an intense game show. That was that would be the game show where I would crack under the pressure. Because like it, I would be the one that would forget to bank all the money so the money's safe, and then get the question wrong, and then I'll be voted out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I, I feel like that's what would happen if I was on that show. Wait, so um, you, do you guys remember the tester, that PlayStation game show? They did like I one season remember, of it? I remember of it. I don't think I've ever watched it. No, no okay. I, yeah. I, I'm very interested. Very interested. You, you guys need to watch it. It came out in like 2012, and Greg Miller himself was actually on an episode of it. Oh, no shit. Yeah, at, I think it was at the end of the show. He asked some uh, trivia, and one of them was like, oh, well, what's your favorite um, PlayStation exclusive and all of them fucking got it wrong except for one. Like a lot of them are listing off Insomniac games, which you know, uh, damn, because that's technically they're because he said favorite first party, uh, oh yeah, PlayStation Studio, and they don't count. But that that show was a lot of fun to watch. It had like uh, uh, Uncharted, uh, Golden Abyss themed levels, or one of them was like that. This sounds Forgot like the best that. thing. It is, and then you get that tra- that drama in there. And it, it had a ego raptor in it. He's like one of the notable guys in there. Nice. And I, I, I just remember uh, Greg Miller. Well, because yeah, Greg Miller had him on pod, podcast Beyond, and he was giving him shit because Beyond. you know, ego raptor. He, he technically wasn't like a PlayStation fan. He's like, oh, I, I own a PlayStation Three, but I hardly play it. <laughs> <laughs> like pretty much the only reason they had him on there was because he was a notable like YouTube personality at the time. Was, I was recommend host, that show. Was it hosted by uh, Kevin Butler? What? No, it wasn't. Unfortunately, that, that, Damn. See, that missed would opportunity. Just, that would have brought it all together, circa 2012 or whatever. I know. But yeah, look, look it up on YouTube. It's it's a couple episodes long, and um, the, the guy who ended up winning is is. is I'm glad he won because he definitely deserved it. He knew his. He knew his. Those guys like I didn't care for him. But I think that that would be another game show I could do all right at. I mean, because it wasn't just the trivia stuff; it was you know the all the obstacle courses and whatnot they included in there and the random stuff. Obstacle courses, okay, okay. Yeah, with, with my combined PlayStation knowledge and then my uh, you know my my physique, I could do it. <laughs> yeah, you could do it. So, if you like obstacle courses, would you do the Ninja Warrior course? Oh no, that's that's for Fuck. like real See, athletes. I, yeah, yeah, I, I would last that, approx- I would last like 15 seconds max oh, on a good day. Uh, see, like, with for me, like, but my my, uh, my job my, with roofing, it, it can like get me so far. Like, I don't know if I could hang on to something or pull myself yeah, up. Like, yeah. you got to train for like five years to do Ninja Warrior. Yeah, no, I I wouldn't be able to do that. Uh, that's a, that's a lot. Yeah, of I could work. do like one pull up, yeah. maybe. So <laughs> yeah, I could do like I mean, half a pull up at most on a just ideal conditions um yeah not d- not down but those guys are nuts and i love it they are nuts. but hey like you know they they have the physique for it and oh, they've yeah. been training and like they, they haven't been training for that right they were doing something else like a lot of them are some people in others. some people a lot of them are firefighters oh, okay yeah and like parkour yeah. people yeah some people just oh, do man. they train specifically for it like they build like their own like 
the, the obstacles in like their backyard and stuff. So they have like the obstacles and they really devote like all their time to Ninja Warrior, which is pretty crazy. Uh-huh. It's like, how do you live off that? But hey, more power to him. More power to him. Uh, man. Exactly. So, um, some game shows that I was really big, really big in my family growing up were Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. Don't know how we haven't mentioned either no, of those. I, you said that was like, damn, those are like the obvious ones right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, and Jeopardy, I feel like maybe I could do okay on if I was doing like junior with a bunch of like kids. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Um, that would kind of level out the playing field for me. However, Wheel of Fortune, I, I, I feel like I do, I do so well on Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. I'm just a really good guesser. Mm-hmm. There's Wheel of Fortune's a good one. Yeah, there's a period of time in my life where I watched Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy like every day. Um, still would absolutely be terrible at Wheel of Fortune. I don't know what it is. I just cannot fill in the blank. I don't know what Damn. it is. Yeah, I'd have to. I'd have to really, really focus. But I feel like I crack under the pressure. Honestly. I don't know if I do very good at all. And Jeopardy, it's like I don't have two doctorates. I don't know. I don't know yeah, no. most of these things are at all. But <laughs> yeah, when they did like the junior ones, I was like, oh, these fucking kids are stupid. Why aren't they getting? I'm like, oh yeah, it's because I'm like 13 at the time or whatever. <laughs> so, man, there's a lot of good game shows. I'm really excited for Cash Cab to come back. That is that made yeah. my day right there. Holy and, crap! And I think they're going. It's not just New York based. I think he's going to different cities and doing stuff there too. I I went to Vegas for like a few episodes and that was pretty cool. Yeah, just like you have like the time pressure of it. You have like it depends like on traffic. It's like all right, if traffic is bad, like you get more time. Like just there's it just had so many layers to it that really made a really compelling show. Yeah, do in San Francisco, you'll you can sit in the cab forever. Yeah. (laughs) If I get in the cash cab one of these days, uh, I first off I'll flip my shit and then. Uh, I might win something. I don't know. Would you know, like instantly, the moment those lights turn on that you're where you are? Yeah. If I didn't know it was coming back, I'd be like, "What the fuck?" And then, yeah. but now that I know, I'm gonna be prepared every time I get into an Uber or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a good call. Yeah, cash Uber. Yeah, uh, the, the reboot, <laughs> the evolution, yeah, the evolution. Man, so so I looked up the tester, and apparently there's three seasons of it. I didn't know that. How long are the so, episodes? Um, I'm not sure, but they aren't terribly long. Like, okay, I think around 20 minutes, if that. They're not going like, to dedicate an hour to place or to Uncharted: Golden Abyss. No, they won't. <laughs> but yeah, that that last season did come out like I think 2011, 2012. So it's been a while. <laughs> so all right, we, we need you to like. Uh, scratch the dust off this tablet really fast with your finger. Yeah. <laughs> One finger. Yeah, go buy a Vita. Um, well, that'd be the prize. It's like, all right, you win. Here's a PlayStation Vita. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm pretty sure there was one where they, I think it was for that Uncharted Golden Abyss uh, really? episode they did give out a Vita. Nice. Very nice. So don't they get like, a, didn't they get like a, uh, a QA job too? Yeah, they, yeah. Actually, the guy who won, he ended up, yeah, he got a job at a Sony uh santa monica right or the the guys who do uh uh that's that's god of war right yep santa monica okay yeah he got a job there and uh they actually showed him going in and uh going into the studio and visiting with the guys and he and they showed like the gameplay and at the time he had no idea what it is what it was but like now looking back at it it's like oh that was god of war judgment right or or ascension Ascension, that's what it is. I got it mixed up with fucking like, uh, the like other Gears G-O-W. Of G-O-W. Gears, of Gears of War. Gears of War yeah. Judgment. That's because not a great the, game. Neither of these no, are great games. But. Neither, neither of those are yeah. very great games. But yeah, it was super interesting seeing that. I, I have no idea if that guy is still working there or what's going on with That'd him. That'd be pretty cool if he's like, yeah, I've yeah. stuck it out all these years. <laughs> testing mm-hmm. the new God of War. It's pretty cool. Man. So, okay, I have the wiki Wikipedia up for the tester. The winner of... Uh, each season gets a job at Sony Computer Entertainment as a QA tester and a yeah QA tester with a five thousand dollars signing bonus and a PlayStation Three. Yeah, that's right. That sounds like a good nice. prize pool to me. I'll take the job. Um, if it's one of the uh, the fat PS3s, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, no, I think the, as well. the ones that yeah, are probably a that die on arrival. I really missed man the fat PS3. Rest yeah, in peace the with the Chrome. 
plays total backwards cool. compatibility. Man, I, I miss that thing still to this day. It died a horrible, untimely death. So, Kyle, as someone who co-hosts a PlayStation podcast, when do you think God of War is going to drop? Uh, it's funny you should say that because I was scrolling through Twitter and uh, if you know, do you guys know the name of Tidex? Potentially no. not off. No, I guess not. He, he, he's something on Twitter that, that kind of breaks some big things and uh, he has a pretty good track record. I think he, he used to write into PS I Love You all the time. Okay. That um, might have been why I recommend, I recognize think, it. Yeah, I think yes. yesterday night I saw he put uh, God of War March 22nd. I mean, that's the Jeez. consensus. That's what we've been hearing. A lot of March Which dates is... been thrown around. Yeah, but man, that is real close. I don't remember the last game that was announced like the date was this close to release. I mean, they're they're turning uh, around. They don't want. Almost, uh, yeah, it's almost like a like a big uh, album coming out the next day or something. Nobody knows. So the twenty second is a Thursday. I feel like that would be kind of, or maybe maybe it'll like like Thursday midnight or whatever. But that's kind of a. Well, that makes sense with the the new, um, oh god, I can't think of the name. Uh, hmm. the, the 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 Greek mythology or the Roman mythology, where the North there go, North mythology. Yeah. It's like yeah, just like, go through the list. Thursday, Thursday. Oh, that's really clever. Oh, oh you shit. might okay. Ooh. This this I, I rumor, think, I think I'm, I'm convinced. convinced. This rumor just got substantiated. All right, I'm gonna lock Exclusive it in. Exclusive Grid Life Digest confirmed. Yeah. We just confirmed. Can we put on the title? God of War Day confirmed. March 20, 22nd on Thursday. Yeah, on Thursday. Man, <laughs> Thursday. that that kind of blew my mind. <laughs> That's so great. Yeah. They'd be uh, really smart to do that. Personally, I, I feel I feel like that boy is Thor. No, that, that would be that so. Is, oh. oh no, Whoa, no, okay. no. That'd be an interesting take. You don't think so? Because no. I feel like his le- his arrows have lightning attached to it. The first couple demos I've seen, so I, I, I don't know. I, I feel like it could be Thor. What if? Yeah. What if it's not like Kratos's kid, but like his yeah. wife's kid, and his? Oh, whoa! Holy Thor is shit. half human. Mm-hmm. Yep, he is half human. Kind of blowing my mind a little bit. <laughs> Holy crap! I kind of wanted to kill Thor, but now. If Whoa, he's a son. That's now a t- raise him. That's a toy. Yeah. Holy shit! Kratos <laughs> raises Thor. <laughs> Who know? Who knew we would get here from talking about prices, right? Yeah, like man. <laughs> well, this is usually what happens here. We'll start out with something. This is why then, this show is fun. <laughs> uh-huh. I mean, people knock on us for doing that, but like, this is why I love it. You know, it's just kind of like we have a basic structure. So we, we can just go off of God of War. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, if this <laughs> doesn't go happen, I'm gonna be a little disappointed. I was like, it's yeah. it's all the pieces are there, but anyway. Mm-hmm. I think March is a great time. Like that's just I just want God of War as soon as humanly possible. And I'm not even a huge God of War fan. Like I've been kind of like lukewarm on the on the other games. I'm gonna replay them before the new one comes out just to get them fresh. But uh, they really sold me with this new take. So yeah. I'm I'm all in. Last of Us comparisons be damned. I don't care. Yep. I was a fan of the God Whoa. of War games beforehand, but even then, I I agree that Kratos is a dick and super hey. unlikable. Yeah, he's super unlikable. It's like he's not and, a compelling character yeah, whatsoever. But, the yeah the the little stuff that we've seen of the new one, I'm totally I, I like the direction they're going. Kratos has some sort of like uh, control over his anger. Yeah, it's like Calliope, which could be interesting to play with uh, story wise and gameplay yeah. wise. Trying to keep it together, and then at the end he probably okay. loses his shit and murders Odin or something. I don't feel like he's gonna kill any gods. Actually, I really I really think it's gonna be restrained to like just more Norse like creatures that we we know. Mm-hmm. Um, but who knows? Who knows? They might do. No, let me fight Loki. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> As like a frost giant, that would be pretty cool. But who knows? Anyway, what, any uh, final mentions for game shows? <laughs> <laughs> no. I think yeah, I have a couple. couple. Okay, go shoot. Um, go for it. I was big into this game show. I think it was on the History Channel. Uh, called Top Shot. Oh, if you watch that, yes. dude, that is yes. that is I've totally, totally forgot about that. That is like seriously one of my favorite TV shows of all time. I love that show Top is Shot. fucking awesome. I, I, oh, one. they all had that house and they just they were all like these like like talented. Mar- oh, my gosh, dude. I totally forgot. I want to go watch the whole first season again. That is, 
such a good show. Yeah, Top Hat's a good choice. Yeah, if any of you haven't seen it, it's probably on Netflix or something. I don't know, but watch that. That was awesome. Got that Barry. Even if you don't cow. like guns. Yeah, it's more than just guns. It's like it's it's every kind of marksmanship, which is yeah. super cool. Um, man, oh, I'm pretty, I, pretty yeah, sure there's one about rocks. <laughs> I, I just thought of another one, a big one, and one not so big. Uh, there was a, used to be an MTV like paranormal game show called Fear. I never Ooh. saw that one. It was Spooky. Very, it wasn't on for very long. It was like you had a team of people. They would go out off in this haunted places to um, complete these challenges. And if you didn't complete the challenge, uh, or like you're too scared, you just wouldn't come back to base camp. And oh, okay, like, the rest of your, <laughs> and the rest of your team wouldn't know that. They're like, "Oh, where's Jessica?" And the rest of the show, you don't know where Jessica is because she just kind of left. She's gone. She's gone. <laughs> And I think if you if you made it through the whole night and completed certain challenges, you would win like fifty thousand dollars to split amongst the team. Oh yeah, damn! Um, that was a great show. I can't find it anywhere. It's like they've scrubbed all uh, all video of it. Like I can't find it on YouTube or <laughs> on DVD or anything. Burn the files. Uh, the other huge one that I can't. Uh, forgive myself for forgetting was who wants to be a millionaire oh yeah dude oh that, Re- that was such regis a, such a phenomenon yeah regis and then uh oh what's her name from the today show did it meredith Mer- yeah. yeah and then i think cedric the entertainer is the host now that music oh, uh, like the lights coming down oh, yeah. yeah yeah how could i forget the, the controversy of the the one guy i think in britain who played was it britain or slumdog millionaire yeah, that's a first of all a great movie. Uh, but there was some guy who his wife in the audience would cough when the right answer was was said. Oh, that's 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 Whoa. some Tim Gates level scheming right there. Yeah, yes. he he won the million dollars because of that. And some viewer at home was like, "Uh, you guys should really look into this coughing thing because yeah. it's it's kind of fishy. It's kind of a little, little suspect." Up, yeah, they ended up. Getting the police involved, he had to give back the money. I think he had some jail time they had to do. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty yeah, incredible. It, it, it's, a, it's a pretty cool story. I'll have to read up on that. But yeah, who, who Wants to Be a Millionaire is another one I think I would do pretty good at. Pretty good. Yeah, I could say I, I could probably get it's a, a lot of pressure, though. A good way up the board. Uh, yeah. But you can also, you know, you can get your, you know, call somebody or you got your saves or whatever. Yeah, all, it, all this. Very much like yeah, you get your shout outs, you get your yeah. lifelines. Yeah. So if you're stuck, you can get some help. But if you hit a certain level, you're guaranteed to get that money, even if you get a question wrong. Yeah, you got the checkpoints. Yeah, great show. Yeah. Also a great show. Yep. I did not know uh, about the modern uh, Cedric the Entertainer in creation. Yeah, I, yeah. I believe it's Cedric that's hosting. I, I believe you. Um, yeah. Just a quick quick shout out before we move on. Uh, Face Off, the um, prosthetic makeup yep. competition. Yeah, so I, I really enjoyed the first couple seasons of that. Um, pretty sure... Uh, I don't know. I think it was this show, but uh, Neil Druckmann was on one. On Face Off. Yeah, that's want, cool. Yeah, for one that was like about like infected mm-hmm. makeup. Um, yeah, don't quote me on that. Neil Druckmann. Uh, Ink, Ink Master is another good one. That's a good one. Yeah, there's yeah, there's I'm so not, many. Final. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention RuPaul's Drag Race. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's a good one. It's entertaining. That's all I got to say about that. Not familiar. Uh, My friend Kelsey uh, from the Kind of Funny Group actually was on the first episode of the season of Ink Master. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, that's awesome. Go, go, uh, go! Record that episode. Check it out. Um, she didn't get a whole lot of airtime, and they, the judges, they they didn't have the nicest of words to say about her tattoo, even though they were completely wrong. Her tattoo is beautiful. I'll see it. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, But it's it's. Yeah, uh, it, it's it's a cool it's cool that I know somebody that's on like my favorite reality TV shows. Yeah, that's awesome. The, the, the thing about that show that kind of bothers me is like if you get a shitty tattoo, like that's gonna be there for a while unless mm-hmm. you go out and get the surgery done or the laser thing to get it off. Yeah. That, that's always kind of bothered me because I've seen some. There's been some not so great tattoos on there. <laughs> I've thought about wanting like to apply because I've always wanted a tattoo and. Mm-hmm. A free tattoo would be great, but that's true. 
What if the shittiest of artists and you're stuck with something real bad? <laughs> yeah, you know? just the luck, luck of the draw. Yeah. Like, are, <laughs> you can probably sue them and be like, oh, you know, you got a shitty tattoo on me. Unless they write in my application, wait until the good ones are left, and then I'll come in. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> give, give me, like, the, the final contestants, and then we'll talk. Yeah. We'll, we'll get those good uh-huh. ones in there. Um, just, a qu- just a random quick aside. If you had to get um, a tattoo... That was game related. What would you get? So for me, I, I I've talked about it a bit before. I want to get the the sick Parvis Mag was a Magna Magna yeah um from Uncharted. What, what was it? Magma yeah, or sick Magna? Par- Magna. Magna. Okay, yeah, I had it right. But like, I, I feel like that kind of means a lot to me because it means it was a greatness from small beginnings. Everyone can I, identify with I that. Want, exactly, it goes with anything. Like it. You can look at it and you don't think video games unless if you like specifically put like the Uncharted logo or something like that. Yeah. But anyways, I, I just want the words on my wrist or I don't know, somewhere yeah. like it'd be cool. And uh, th- that's what I would get personally, just because it kind of means a lot to me. And, like Uncharted is my favorite video game series, especially Uncharted 3. So I I, I, I would really love that on, on myself personally. What would you call And it wouldn't be too nerdy. Oh. I, I've thought about this a lot. I have some very concrete ideas. As soon as I get enough money, I'll probably get them. Oh, nice. Very cool. I really like the whole idea of having a whole sleeve mm-hmm. of everything I love and everything nerdy. So, like, in my in my head, I imagine, like, an alleyway or something. And, like, there's posters referencing certain games and characters hanging out on the street. Like, that would be uh, awesome. Like a, like a Borderlands vault symbol graffiti on the wall, and uh, above it all would be like the kind of funny smiley as the Batman signal. Like, that is so cool. That is such a cool idea, I, dude. That's what I want uh, my sleeve to be because uh, I'm a pretty. I, I like to think I'm a pretty emotional and have, wear my heart on my sleeve. So why? What better than have everything I love on my sleeve? on your sleeve? Yeah, literally. Yeah. Um, and then the other gaming thing I want is I want the PlayStation symbols, but instead of big having, fan, big fan of those. Uh, but instead of having them just be basic, uh, take a, a special item in the PlayStation universe and assign them to each um, button. So like the circle would be Nate's ring, the box would be a Crash Bandicoot box. Oh my cat! You're uh, so creative. <laughs> The X would be the Kratos blades. Dang, Ooh. this is the, that'd be dope. The triangle would either be the Firefly logo, like upside down, Oof. or uh, Aloy's um, focus. Oh, that's a that's a good one. God, you're get yeah, you're giving me so many like, ideas. Like, right. as, as soon as I get the money, I will be all over this. How much do you think that would cost you? I, I'm, oh, I'm... To, to get it the way I want and. Like mm-hmm. I said, I want to go to someplace good. So yeah, no, good. especially <laughs> uh, probably I don't know five hundred, six hundred bucks. Oh, okay. I mean that, would, that and, mm-hmm. yeah. but that would be worth it though because you're not paying some you know dude in his basement. He's like, oh, I know how to tattoo, and he pulls out like a and oh, yeah, you know, I know like thread around it. Blades look like yeah. Yeah. you know, starts poking you with it. Yeah, no, no thank you. <laughs> So five hundred dollars, I can see that would be well worth because it's something that's mostly permanent, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Man, I love but, I love both of those ideas so much. But Eli, would you get a game tattoo? Okay, if you were forced to get a game tattoo, what would it be? So, a video game one. I I've thought a lot about getting just the classic PlayStation logo from like the PS One with the colors, colors on it. Yeah. 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 Um. Video games specifically, I, I just I, I don't know if I have one in mind. That that's pretty much it. Okay. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I can't think of a game that I would really that I'm really that tied to that I'm like you know I want this on me forever. Yeah. Except for just like the PlayStation logo. Yeah, that's a good one. I've seen I've seen some really cool uh, Bioshock ones. Oh, Bioshock would be a good. I would too. totally like, get like the, the chains. chains. Yeah, the yeah, chains. It'd be it, oh. like also also not overtly nerdy unless you know what it is, which yeah. I like. I like subtle ones. Um, mm-hmm. Something I've been kicking around seriously lately, um, and I might get it is uh, right here, just on my wrist, like below my wrist. I want to get um, the Fox 
logo from Metal Gear Solid 3. Yeah, do it. Um, because one, it's just a dope fucking logo. And two, like it's you, awesome. Like you wouldn't really know what it is unless um you 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 know Metal Gear. But um also I just yeah. I wouldn't want to have to explain it to every person that I talk to, which is why I'm kinda of, Oh no. Yeah, it's like no well, what does that mean? It's like <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's from this video game from the PS two. I'm like, I don't want to have to go through oh, all that. Or, or, you, or you could just say like you could just say, Oh, I really like foxes. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big like fan that. of fox yeah, I'm a big fan of foxes. <laughs> yeah. Get into yeah. the Metal Gear lore. So, yeah, because yeah. if you're gonna go into yeah. that, you're gonna have you're, you're gonna have to sit them down for like a two hour conversation and explain everything to them, which is about still, what Metal Gear is, which I want to do on the show. Still, I just I need to, <laughs> you know, carve out an episode to do it. But yeah, just be like, all right, listen. So the CIA after World War II, blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. Have this <laughs> this this special forces unit called Fox, right? And then yeah, just go into it. But <laughs> and then there's uh, the the the, the what was it the nano bots the yeah nano machines. Was that what they're called? And by the, and like, by the end, it's all nano machines. So none of it was actually real. That, that, that's um, the answer for everything. You yeah, know? especially in four. But I'm yeah. hearing <laughs> some some uh, some similarities to the prequels. Midi chlorians and yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess like microscopic organisms that give you superpowers. Yeah, yeah, you know, you're you're hitting the nail on the head here. But yeah. it also kind of has like a greatness from small beginnings type thing because like it's that's where it all started, and then it's what led to um you know Snake becoming who he really is. So it kind of has kind of a dual meaning and like kind of you know starting from small starting from scratch and then eventually in his case becoming a global terrorist but in my case hopefully you know becoming you know what doing what I want to do in life but so it's all interpretation. All right. So since we're talking talking about game shows, like uh, maybe Kojima should have his own game show. <laughs> like what would that look like? About? Yeah, it's like it's like what's Death Stranding? What the hell is going on in Death Stranding? <laughs> the winner gets ten thousand dollars and a PlayStation oh, God, Vita. It's like, oh, you you gotta be, you know fucking lick this dab of acid before you you do whatever. <laughs> like it, it would be something drug related. I have a feeling just because that's how those trailers are. <laughs> what worries me is that it isn't. Or you just wake up in like a random like giant warehouse and you have to figure out how to get out. Yeah, but it's that's, that's like, too. just a bunch of like sneaking. Uh-huh. I don't know. Octopus tank. There's a baby in, inside of you. Yeah, it's like, it's like, don't be alarmed, but there is a fetus inside of you right now. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Don't look down. And then the, the and then the the Metal Gear alert music will start playing if someone finds you. <laughs> that would be such a fun obstacle course, though. Like a Metal Gear Solid <laughs> obstacle course. Like that would be so much fun. Like they have like guards that are, are like like um very unaware on purpose so it's like you have to be like really overt so and then you, mm-hmm. know, you could like hold them up and uh get in like a cardboard box yeah, and sneak yeah. out. um and they like act stupid on purpose but anyway good off track probably move on um i think uh, i i think uh rooster teeth did something like that they uh, did it would, ever, the yeah immersion, right? immersion that's one of the best yeah. series online right now like especially that episode it's a lot of fun basically like is would the cardboard box actually be tactically viable and of course the answer is no <laughs> um no surprise uh, there i like their fall all that one they did was fantastic. Yeah, especially since like before that, they're like, we don't know if this show is going to come back, and then they're like, here's this awesome like multi-part Fallout one. So yeah, go check out Immersion. It's such a great series. A lot of lot of fun experiments. Um, I especially like one of the early ones, which was like, could you drive a car in third person? Like they had the camera attached. Yeah, and just yeah. like, could you? Could your brain actually yeah. physically do that? So yeah, there's so many good ones. Can't. Um, or the viability of fighting game uh, outfits. <laughs> it's like, of course, they're totally, totally unrealistic. Um, all right, so move on. Micah, what's your topic? Okay, so mine, mine's pretty fun. It uh, required some homework for you guys. So I wanted to go over, like, what, what, were you, what, what is your total for your Amazon purchases of 2017? Like, how much money did you spend it all? All of your hard-earned cash goes straight to Amazon, you know, just because... You can go, you know, like I, I've noticed the one thing with people is like they'll get super drunk and then start, you know, doing Amazon purchases, and like I found myself doing that too. But anyways, uh, <laughs> I I've just ra- I I've spent so much money last year; it's insane. Like I'm looking at my total, I'm like, how the fuck did I do that? <laughs> but then going through the list, like it all makes sense now. I'm like, oh, I did buy that. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, shame, walk of shame. Yeah, so I, I might as well explain my total. So for 2017, I spent four thousand nine hundred and twenty dollars and eight cents. 
Like, Damn. That's a lot. That's a lot of fucking money. That's a lot like, of money. That's a, that's a way more than I should have. But like, but explain I, I, what I, what's the main thing okay, you bought? That's okay, so so like in the beginning of the, of the year, I built a PC. So that was around like fourteen hundred. So that easily like stacks <laughs> it up. Okay, that that's a good start there. And then next, my next big purchase after that was probably my uh, camera. That was a, that was six hundred and forty six dollars. And then Black Friday, I bought a new TV, and I spent another fifteen hundred. And then I, I think that, and then I bought an Xbox One. So it just kind of like all, and then including all the other games I bought, and other knickknacks and uh, you know Funko Pops, like it just all added up. And uh, Amazon, they've done a great job of taking my money. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're very good at what they do, and it's not uh, very nice. And I haven't stopped. <laughs> Like in the beginning of this year, I think I've in the first 14 days, the first two weeks of uh 2018, I probably spent like $300 on there already. Oh, nice way to go! So, it, yeah, it's just it's not gonna stop. Like, there's no way I can hold what keep myself from doing it. <laughs> I mean, there's one day I'll, I'll have to not do this, but for right now, screw it. I don't have any big bills. I mean, I still save up my money, it's not like I'm spending all of my money, yeah. So, um, don't do that. Yeah, I'm just curious. So, what what your guys's uh purchases are and like what you mostly spent it on like for me i mean i have a feeling it'll be a similar tale for all of us mostly on electronics and video games and movies and... surprised okay okay yeah i i, I okay I, i'm ex- i'm excited to hear this because right. there's a bunch of shit you can buy on there well so. with, with that tease kyle start us off uh all right yeah. so uh when you when Noah told me that this was going to be something I should look up, I was like, hmm, I don't remember the <laughs> last time I used Amazon or bought something on Amazon. Oh, damn. Really? So I, I, I went back and I, I was like, all right, let me see what I bought in 2017. And the only thing that was on there was a GameStop gift card that I used. The only reason I did that was because I got, had Amazon, an Amazon gift card. And, oh. Um, I prefer getting my games at GameStop because of the reward program. Mm-hmm. So I got the gift card uh, so I could get Wolfenstein, Mario, and Assassin's Creed Origins. Hell yeah. Like oh I, need, I needed that. And then I bought pajama pants. Like last <laughs> Pajama week. pants? Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> That's it. So 50 bucks is my total for Amazon for like the last year. Oh, man. <laughs> See, I mean, like, that's a good I, 50 bucks that's 50 bucks well know, spent right, right there exactly. very well spent i i, I was kind of thinking like oh yo uh kyle he, he he's an adult like he, he should have bought some decent <laughs> well, things out there <laughs> to, to, to be fair um most of last year i had no money coming in oh i wasn't working so okay like, when, I, when i had to buy something it it usually went to more important things than games and stuff but with that said my wish list is pretty big Okay. So it's not, <laughs> it's not like I you always add stuff that I like on there. So. Okay. Sweet. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just thought everyone, like every single gamer, probably used Amazon a lot, especially for the pre-orders, like twenty percent off. That's it's a no off, brand. man. Yeah. Until uh, Best Buy uh, is since Best Buy is better, I might switch over to that. But that's originally why I got Prime, and then now mm-hmm. I just use it to buy everything. But so I looked up my total. Um, I learned uh, how to use uh, Excel spreadsheet commands for the first time since the 10th grade. Um, (laughs) And so with everything, on my list here it says I have 94 items. My total total coming out to uh, $2,760.64, give or take. Nice. Um, That includes, like we said, games. That also includes textbooks. That includes um, the desk I bought, the chair I bought, um, the... 64 gigabyte ridiculous uh vita memory card i don't know why i did it but i'm glad i did um the thing is insane what were they thinking um bunch of switch switch accessories um oh yeah easily school supplies like basically uh, anything under the sun like i i bought on amazon this year because i'm even though i live right across the street from a store i'm lazy so Okay. I mean, I'm I'm feeling reassured, Noah. I was like, "Fuck, I'm, I'm probably the only one up in the several thousand range." No, it's like you I'm you, sure you bought good after I said fifty. Yeah, I'm what's sure. that? 
I said, I'm sure you felt real good after I said 50 bucks. And then, yeah, no, I felt <laughs> terrible. <laughs> I was like, fuck. fuck. <laughs> He's not even in the, you know, uh, the hunter drains, you know, yeah. <laughs> I thought everyone was at least there. <laughs> yep. I had a, I, I had a few like hundred dollar purchases, but I didn't have anything past like a few hundred. And then you were dropping, okay. you were dropping on dope TVs and stuff. So yeah, no, I was buying all sorts of shit on there. Yeah. But uh, I was paying attention though. You said you bought like 91 items or something like that. It's 94, or like that. I believe. 94. Okay. Yeah. I'm looking at how many items I bought and I bought 61. Okay. So I just but bought a lot of li- I bought, little you know, stuff. Th- yeah. You bought a bunch of little stuff. I bought a bunch of big stuff. So that's how that went. What about you? But that, that's kind of oh, like. Um, oh, this guy go. So I'm in the pretty low range. I'd say I spent $326.16. I feel terrible. What? <laughs> Oh my gosh! Yeah. I I really don't so, know how I, I think because I buy digital games. So mm-hmm. if you add that into if I bought everything on Amazon that I bought digitally, it would be a few hundred more probably. Okay. Um. But yeah, I guess I don't know. I, it was a low spending year, a lot of school supplies, and then just like houseware stuff on Amazon, and then uh. I bought Mario Odyssey, Horizon, and then Wolfenstein 2 off of there. Plus, one of my finest investments in the past year um, is the toilet LED. So, oh, <laughs> nice. motion sensor yeah. too. How, how do you enjoy that? Like, do you? Is it constantly lit up, or like just want to use it? <laughs> no, when I walk in, it, there's like a motion sensor on. I guess. Okay. So when I walk in, it lights up blue. Okay, because I, I I thought it would start like making different sorts of colors, like you know, as you're taking you a sip or something. Okay, <laughs> that is like, a thing know. you can do. <laughs> but I like the blue. Is it like under the toilet seat, or like where is it? It's like under the seat part that you lift up, yeah. and you just like hook it on to the bowl itself. Okay, and it's just an LED that like shines into the that clean white mm. reflection. Mm. Um, I don't know if I'm down for that. Oh, it's but, it's a game changer. But maybe if I saw it, I'd be converted. But just thinking about that, it's like I gotta yeah. clean it. Like I've I've seen those on there, and I I was I was tempted to pick up one of those as like a a gag gift for this uh white elephant gift exchange. But I was like, wait, this is family. I don't know if I should be giving that out. <laughs> but it, it it did look interesting. I was like, that would be fucking cool if my toilet bowl is lighting up. I guess I mean, it would it be would, cool. Like <laughs> cool seems like add, a strong yeah. word. <laughs> All right, let would, me. Let me paint a picture for you. Paint a picture for it, me, AI. It's 3 a.m. Four, I, I don't know. 3 a.m., I'm going to say. Mm-hmm. You you wake up really groggy. You had a long night, long day even, mm-hmm. and you, just, you really have to pee. But you're in that phase where, you know, I'm just going to pee. I'm going right, to go right back to sleep. Mm-hmm. So you don't want to turn any of the lights on in your house. Not even you wash just, your hands? Okay, you're going to wash your hands. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not turning lights on because then it's like, oh shit! Like now I'm awake because there's lights on. Uh huh. So you walk in the bathroom and there it is, just a nice blue hue of light, just waiting for you to pee in it, <laughs> or whatever <laughs> color. A, a, a welcome, a welcome, a welcoming like portal into the sewer. Like you just yeah, that's what it is. Like okay. a, a cool portal that it's not like the piss portal, uh, offensive <laughs> to your eyes or anything. No, it's beautiful. <laughs> So you, you you piss in the the blue portal and it comes out the, the orange one somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it so makes I, it fun to to piss. Dang, I, I I'm pretty sold on this now. Now I, I kind of want to get one. Except for uh, I don't know how my grandparents would approve of me having one. They'll love it. <laughs> They'll be converted Especially to. When guests come over. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like oh, where'd you get that? Get me one. <laughs> <laughs> Just add on to that Amazon total for 2018. Yep, <laughs> start racking it up. But I guess yeah, for myself, I'm gonna try to like chill out for a bit. Maybe uh, not spend upwards to towards five thousand dollars. You know, I was thinking like, oh, if I had five thousand dollars, an extra five thousand dollars right now, like I could buy some cool imagine. shit with that. Or, or I could yeah, I, I'd have that saved up, and I could go get my own place. Or uh, I could buy a new car, not a new car, but a new car to me. A new car. Or, yeah, like, be, I, or I could use that for college, you know. But in my head, I'm like, fuck, you know, I'm gonna spend like two thousand dollars for a quarter of school when I could 
buy something fucking cool with that, you know? <laughs> like, oh, I can see the return right now. Or I can see the return maybe in like two, three years, you know? I'd say you did fine for yourself. Yeah. You, okay. got, you got you made some you. pretty pretty sweet purchases that I'm a little just a smidgen okay. jealous of. But yeah, you, got a, a little bit. you got a nice TV, I'm assuming. Uh huh. It's it's in back of me. It's the fifty five inch OLED oh, from LG. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. Great. And then you it is. It's it's fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. I, I but think you made the right right decisions. Okay, thank you. I'm I'm feeling better about it. Feeling vindic- <laughs> but vindicated a little bit. It, it, anyways, for uh, that PC that I bought. I had actually uh, like dropped out of college so I could get that PC. I'm like, I need this PC. Like, I, I could do some cool stuff with it, like um, start editing videos and all that. And that's what I've always wanted to do. And uh, that's what I ended up spending that money on. And like, I really don't regret it because I've used it for making videos and I've enjoyed it a lot. And uh, that's kind of in line with my passion instead of going and spending it on college, you know. But I mean, I. I, I will eventually go back, but right now I'm just like, oh, I, I, I want to get some cool things, you know. It was a business decision. Yeah, well, that's kind of how I look at it as. Like, um, pretty much all of these, like, a lot of these recent purchases I've had, um, I've, I've kind of reassured myself, like, oh, this is for a grid life digest. You know, I can do it. Like, it's almost like a business mindset. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's for improving the business is kind of what I was thinking. Like so, recently I bought like a new PC case and a new uh, a new uh, cooler for my CPU because I, I want to overclock it more so I can render vi- render videos faster and edit them and do more at once. And so Player that, that's kind of what I was thinking. Like your Excel spreadsheet, yeah, <laughs> a thousand frames per second, a thousand frames per second, but... just eyeballs bleeding. Yeah. <laughs> and then like I also kind of like just like tinkering around with it for fun. So it just kind of goes in line with what I like to do, and then, I mean, it's it's not we don't it's not really a business, I guess we have. It's more of just like a project that we all work on together. It's just a thing that happens and like if one I, day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't know no, how like, it's. Oh, we yeah. should quit our jobs and start a podcast. Wait, we don't have to quit our jobs. Let's just do the podcast instead. Yeah, probably but, good good decision there. Yeah, <laughs> but it's 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 fun though because I I have I basically have better tools to do what I want, you know. Like it, like when they say it's a, a smart watch or something, like that's not smart. It's like it's a smart person that uses it and knows how to utilize it. You know? Yeah, it's a tool. Like, uh, the smart. Exactly, it's a tool. Like you can have the most beefiest PC like you ever. Like you could put like ten thousand dollars into it, but like if you don't know how to do anything with it, you don't know how to use Photoshop. You don't know how to use Premiere. You don't know how to use, use anything. Like. That's worthless. That's worthless to you because you can watch Netflix all day. Exactly. Like you could you could do that on a potato laptop. All you have to do is spend like two hundred dollars. You can do that on a Wii. Exactly. (laughs) You can go spend like thirty dollars on the shittiest tablet you could find, and like you're set to go. You don't need to spend five thousand dollars. So that kind of yeah, that's that's my rant there. (laughs) Amazon. We spend a lot of money on it, except for Eli and Kyle. I mean, use the, mo- the most, like the utmost um, best purchases he could possibly get on there because Boner Jam 2017 yeah. did not mess around. All right. That was <laughs> Shout a- out to 2018. Trying to buy that PS4 Pro. Ooh, get yeah, that, get that, get that boost mode. Get that boost mode. Yeah. If mine dies, I will get it. Yeah, yes. But until then, I'm content with my, my slim, slim, slim. Yeah. I, I like the look of the slim, honestly. Like nothing. I look at it. I'm like, yeah. I, I kind of wish I had that. Well, you got the pro, so like. I, got, I know, but like, just the way it game. looks, yeah. though. I I mean, okay. I don't think anything will beat the day one PS4. Like that thing is sexy. No, but no, it is. Yeah, if you're gonna get another one, just like well, get another stack. PS4. Just get another. Yeah, the throw. Oh man, that one is. Yeah, <laughs> that one's quite quite gorgeous, but very. Yeah, just if you want to get another, just get another PS4 Pro, pro stack it on there. Twice the frames. Twice the yeah, frames. increases your power. Yeah, well, well done fact. Well done fact. Yeah, <laughs> little life hack for you. Sh- well, didn't. Four K times two, you yeah. get eight K now. Yeah, you get eight K. <laughs> like, <simple math. laughs> yeah, it's so easy. 
<laughs> it goes back to this fucking rant we had on some other uh, podcast. Well, what was it on a Grid Life Love Letters about Mario? Oh, we yeah. were talking about that for some reason. Was it about Mario? I can't. Remember. I can't remember. It, you yeah, know, it was about rants. Mario. Yeah, yeah. It's like if basically like if you take the PS4 Pro and it's just sta- like you just instead of buying a new console, you just have to buy a new stack and then you just keep keep building on top of it and you have infinite I power. Mean, so it looks like a server farm or something. Basically. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but in my head it makes sense like oh for a PC you just buy a new graphics card so why can't you just buy a new console and stack it on the top of the one you already have. <laughs> but you have to have like another HDMI and like another power cord with it so it's just like it's just a yeah. massive cords coming yeah, out and then like massive cords. <laughs> your your electrical bill is so ridiculous that you have to move out and then like you have to sell it for like five thousand well, dollars and then it's a whole it's a whole then we are including that you know how nintendo they for a splatoon 2 to talk to people you had to connect your phone to your switch and then connect headphones to your to your phone so we we're taking that idea and just making it more ridiculous just like <laughs> like oh you need to c- connect every fucking possible like piece of like electronics you have it's like do every possible thing you can do. <laughs> yeah, like, how convoluted? How bad can this cable management get? Anyway, before we yeah. get too down the rabbit hole. Okay, yeah, let's, let's chill out for a bit. Let's move on. I'll just take us home. So, Fox was purchased by Disney a while ago now. Um, oh, I just want to talk about monopolies and whether or not you were one worried about them or like. Is it a good thing? Like, who benefits besides the company that acquires other company? And specifically with the Fox thing, what are the pros of Disney owning all of these franchises now? Because it's getting to the point where in the next few years, like, Disney's just going to own everything. So, like, besides, like, the stuff with the X-Men, like, are there any pros for this? Or is it just making their prominence in the market even larger than it already is? Um, just kind of a quick question. Um, I really, I, yeah, go ahead. Uh, the way I see it, besides the Marvel stuff, I, I don't get what's like the benefit from it because I mean, other than just having m- another movie studio and making just more money upon their infinite amount of money. Yeah, it's like how much more money could you possibly make at this point? It's insane. Uh, yeah, and I feel like Fox is. <sighs> was big enough and I mean I don't know I don't really look into financial stuff that often but like I don't think they were in any financial issues where they were like we need Disney's money to keep us afloat so like I I mean I I, I don't really like them owning Fox now just because now we have more now Disney has more pull in things where you know, there was a little more freedom. Yeah, like you saw with the uh, with episode eight. It's like they were how they were shoving their 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 power onto these theaters, like forcing way more revenue because theaters cannot afford to not go by their bidding. Like they're they're already showing their strength, and now like they have Fox. It's like they're just gonna get even more wealthy, even and have an even greater pull in the market than they already do. It's kind of crazy. Um, Besides the Marvel stuff, it's like I really don't see any benefit. It's like they're just going to continue to grow and they're going to continue to dominate everything. I guess a pro is that the uh, alien xenomorph, xenomorph queen is now a Disney princess, but yeah. <laughs> potentially she's a queen. She's I mean she's a queen, but one of the few Disney queens. I just like to imagine that just you see like the lineup of Disney princesses, and then you see like the just the egg hatching xenomorph queen. But um, Kyle, do you do you have any particular opinion on this? I mean, the the geeky Marvel loving fan that I am, I'm excited. Yeah, because I get to see, hopefully, see like Avengers versus X Men on the big screen, um, and, and hopefully a good Fantastic Four movie. Uh, That's true. But other other than that, I'm kind of I feel sad for because uh, something that um, I think a lot of people overlook is a lot of people are going to losing their jobs oh yeah absolutely so, it's uh, yeah tons yeah and, and so that that that's kind of like a kind of like a bitter pill to swallow uh so i, I definitely feel bad for everyone that lose that is going to lose their job or if they lost their job already because there's only so many people that can fit a, a role and i'm sure disney had the same 
positions that the Fox uh, company people had. So I don't know. I, I, I can see the, the pros, but the pros are so superficial. Yeah. Like, yay, I get to see characters fight on screen. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! But, but behind the scenes, there's like, it, it feels sinister at like, like, the, the the mouse ears are gonna take over the world. Oh, yeah, Darth yeah. Disney. <laughs> yeah, and, and like like I said, all those people that worked so hard and now they're gonna be looking for other jobs elsewhere. And also, there's not many huge like entertainment companies left. Yeah, it's like Warner Art. Brothers. Like, who else really is on that caliber? Nobody. That isn't Disney. Is Universal yeah. is Universal part of anything or i mean nbc i don't think so oh no comcast owns them in fact <laughs> they're the other giant out there that no one likes with their yeah, internet talk about monopolies uh that's true because i mean they're monopolizing most of america with the internet like yeah. no and i were talking about yesterday like you know you kind of have to abide by their rules because you don't have any other choice it's like you either get internet with Comcast or you don't get internet at all. Yeah. RIP Google Fiber. Yeah. The dream that never was. Exactly. I mean, there there are people who have that, right? But not everyone has it. Minuscule amount. Oh, okay. But yeah. Anyways, going back to the the Marvel and no, no, Disney and Fox thing. Um, the one thing I'm kind of kind of afraid of is Disney's gonna come down. And like dumb down the X Men, like oh we're gonna make it more kid friendly. You're not getting another Logan movie, like you know. We, we, there's no way we can make a rated R movie. It's gonna be PG thirteen. And even that Deadpool, I don't know. So well, far they, unaffected. They've, yeah, they've assured fans that uh, they see the market for an R rated superhero movie, so they're not gonna mess huh. with Deadpool yet. Yeah, until like the next day. Like we, I don't think we're gonna mm-hmm. see Deadpool three in the same vein. Because it's not like they're going to go in there and like, oh, we're going to rewrite everything and reshoot everything. Like, it was, I'm sure this project is mostly finished, so they're not going to go and That's fuck with true. it. I mean, so this I, could also be, that could be a huge reason for Disney to buy Fox for a chance where they can make more adult films and stuff. And that too. put it under Fox. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like, so they can still say rated R and still mm-hmm. be a part of Disney, but it's more, it's like, it. That's the it's its own thing. It. Yeah. Okay, so so when they they roll the credits and shit, so it's it'll be shown like Fox, and it won't be shown like Disney then Fox or something like that. Is that kind of? I, I, I mean, I'm sure they'll be both. Uh huh. Yeah. It's just I don't know because like Fox is kind of its own thing, you know. Like yeah. Disney might own it, but they don't necessarily have to include their logo because, like you're just saying, like it, you know, they kind of want to make it its own thing where you have your rated R movies and all that. Yeah. And then Disney, it's for kids mostly. I mean, but Disney they could go that route. They yeah. own what Miramax? They do, which does like all the Quentin Tarantino exactly. movies. Exactly, and you don't see, or they, I don't think they own them anymore. But they owned them at one point. But yeah. Anyways, they didn't show the Disney logo at all, did they? I don't remember that. They don't show the Disney logo. It might have been like in the end credits, like. Like it might say in small print, yeah. like Disney. Yeah. Or like, like, oh, here's, here's the Mickey Mouse ears. Here's the castle. We don't even get that. that in the Marvel movies. We get the Marvel Studios exactly. logo. We don't get that either. So if, if they kind of you know let Fox do their own thing, I I think that would be great. But yeah, when it goes to the whole you know thing about people losing their jobs, like yeah, that sucks. Mm. And then it also it's just monopolies are bad because it's just the one guy in charge of all this shit. Like, yeah. come on, we need to mix it up a bit. There's not as much competition as there used to be. You know, like, competition yeah. is good for us. I think of, you know, think as of a Wally. consumer. Like, Wally and, mm-hmm. uh, what's it called? By and Large is the company in, in Wally. Oh, yeah, just the mega corporation. Yeah. Or just like, <laughs> or like Blade Runner. Just like, there's like only like a couple like big companies that rule everything. But, uh, so just for context, the deal went through for 52.4 billion dollars that's a lot of fucking money that's a lot of money um and one definite plus going back to deadpool is that it's actually coming out sooner now yeah so i no, mean okay. and then new mutants probably delayed into oblivion um, they, I, never coming out they new mutants till next year uh deadpool comes out between infinity war and 
solo. Uh, so that got moved, I think, May 18th, I think, is the new date for Deadpool. Yeah, which I'm down with. Where do you come yeah. down on solo? Because we're not all that hot on it here. Uh, I'm not the huge, hugest Star Wars guy. Okay. Uh, I, I like them fine. Um, I actually am... I don't know how you guys felt about Last Jedi, but I actually loved Last Jedi. Same here. I loved it too. I, I, okay. <laughs> I, I'm very curious about Solo. Because I like Ron Howard as a director. Mm-hmm. And I absolutely love uh, Donald Glover. Um, oh, God. What's the girl's name that is Khaleesi? Amelia Clark. Yeah. I, I, I like those two as, as performers and actors. So um, I'll give it a chance for sure, but it's one of those things where I feel it's gone through a, a lot of issues, so I don't know what the final oh, product yeah. would be. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about. It's like, if it was Ron Howard from the beginning, I'd be a lot more confident, yes. but the, since he was, like, picking up, and also, like, you hear about, um, I can't remember what the lead guy that's playing Han, but, like, he had to do, like, significant, like, acting classes because, like, they weren't happy with his performance and everything. I'm like, that's not what I want to hear <laughs> for someone who's going to... That's not what I want to hear for someone who's going to portray Han Solo on screen. Yeah. I personally don't think it should exist at all i think they should use the star wars story mantra to do new characters and new things but Mm -hmm. i mean we'll see we'll see i'm i one thing i'm definitely excited to see is just more of what we got in rogue one which is just the empire in its prime and just seeing how that government operated i think i think that stuff is really interesting but like i didn't need i don't need to see the kessel run i don't need to see the deal with with the falcon like yeah i don't know it's like some things are better left unshown Absolutely. And just said, but anyway, well, if, yeah, if you're not a big Star Wars guy, we can move on. I personally grew to love The Last Jedi as well. Um, I know that's contentious. It's very contentious. Um, so, yeah, like, I'm really worried about this murder thing. I I hope we don't come down to a point where there's just no competition in the market. And it's just like every movie that comes out is owned by Disney. It's like, I can, I can see that, a future like that. But I hope some other studios somehow gain a little bit more traction so they can actually legitimately compete with them. Because right now, like... I- at any time, you could have like several movies owned by Disney playing at once in a theater, and it's crazy. Yeah. I, I think what's going to happen is uh, like people are just going to get si- sick and tired of it, and uh, like eventually the indies will come up. Is kind of what I'm thinking. Like they'll get more attraction because they're doing something different. They aren't the big productions. They, you know, probably they have more focus on the story because they can't rely on CGI to get their point across. Yeah, and I, I but think I'm sure Disney owns indie studios as well you know that's true but they have like, their tentacles have... in every facet of entertainment <laughs> but that, that is... doesn't make them an indie studio does it it doesn't make Cause... oh the ones that they own yeah that Disney owns? yeah i don't think that would make them indie studios anymore because independent like it kind of means like they they aren't owned by a big co- corporation they kind of they can do their own thing is that's kind of my understanding of the term indie but I could be wrong. There I guess might they be just a... own like smaller studios that make mm. indie movies. So I guess an indie studio, yeah. Because there is a like Fox. They had like their what was it like Fox like Spotlight? Yeah, Searchlight. Yeah, Searchlight yeah. Like the guys who did Napoleon Dynamite, right? Yeah, like yeah. Um, I they they could own that studio too. I, I assume they do, right? Or is that its own th- its own thing? But not sure. They own so okay, much, yeah. it's hard to keep track of what they don't. Yeah, own. exactly. Yeah. Like there, there needs to be a Wikipedia page out there that shows like all of every single IP, you know, Disney owns. I'm sure know, there everything. is. I'm sure there is that exact thing. Okay, but yeah, but because they own a lot now. I mean, they got their tentacles and uh, you know Star Wars, Marvel. They're just the list keeps on going now with Fox. Oh, um, I, I just don't see it ending. Like, what are they gonna buy next? Warner Ooh. Brothers. They buy DC. DC. <laughs> Oh, I, I mean, could, could, no, 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 that I would mean, be, that would be disastrous. Like, just look yeah, at, look at how be. that has affected, look at how the movie deal has affected Marvel comics. Like, mm-hmm. like it's all, it's just a mess. Like at least DC comics right now, like their comics stuff is all pretty damn good right now. They're in a good mm-hmm. spot, but I, I don't want what happened to Marvel to happen to DC right now. So that is now, not what we need. But I, this deal, will they get like the rights or will we now see like Fantastic Four comics coming back? 
that's what I hope. I hope like, that probably. I hope that the bullshit yeah. that that they've had to pull with the X Men and Fantastic Four, it's like keeping them out of like, for example, Marvel versus Capcom. I hope that stuff yeah. stops because yeah, that was too. bullshit. It's like that was bullshit. This is just movie politics happening. It's like why isn't Wolverine in fucking Marvel versus Capcom? It's ridiculous. Um. So I, yeah, that's a very good point. That's another good positive because they were that was I hated that so much. Um. That they were keeping these good characters out just so they weren't promoting the fox stuff yeah but give us a wolverine like a spe- game, please exactly like especially in the new uh marvel versus capcom where they took out the x-men characters like you know deadpool like he was one of my mains in um, ultimate marvel versus capcom 3 or the, you know the one before that like he's so much the fun to play as and now oh the movie politics you can't have him in there you know or the same thing with how they changed up the story with uh, magneto Oh, uh, technically, uh, was it Scarlet Witch and uh, Quicksilver aren't his kids anymore? Yeah, it's like, you know, they aren't mutants. They can actually, know? hopefully, they'll probably actually be able to say mutants now, too, in the MCU. Exactly. I don't know yeah. if they will at this point. I don't know if there's well, a way to gracefully enter the mutants in. What were you going to say? I was actually reading some, uh, what are those things called? Theories uh, about this. And somebody said that Scarlet Witch will be the one to say it hmm. or or make it like, undo um like the mutant thing so there was a really crazy theory that i could totally see but they're not gonna do it because it's so out there so out there is that so far everything that we've seen from scarlet witch when it comes to the gifted or uh specials is just a dream or the enhanced or whatever they call yeah yeah So, so she's like projecting it as a dream and she's hiding everybody from the world and so, like, Scarlet Witch is so powerful that she can, like, uh, snap her fingers and then the veil will be lifted and then everyone will see the mutants. <laughs> just immediately. Look that, please. So that's one theory I thought was interesting, but I think it, it should come from Scarlet Witch because she's the only... She's the only, only tie. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Because they killed off Quicksilver. Yeah. And Spoiler. I don't think anyone else in the Avengers is... I mean, Spider-Man sometimes hangs out with the X-Men. He does. I mean, I think there was some comic storyline where they talked about him possibly being a mutant, which, I mean, he's not, though, because he got bit by a radioactive spider. He wasn't born that way. But still, it's kind of interesting how they play with that idea. But I'm I'm excited for X-Men and the MCU, even if it it will be kind of jarring. Yeah. I mean, that's I feel like that's the number one reason they bought Fox, you know? Yeah. That's well, gotta why be. Else? Why else would they buy Fox? It's like, like all right, we we just damn yeah. about like Alien, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah. Ridley Scott run serious. that into the ground himself. Covenant mm-hmm. was yeah, w- did not like Covenant, but um, yeah, it's like all right, we can't negotiate a deal with them like we did with Spider Man. Let's just buy them outright. <laughs> like I feel like that's must must have been what happened. Um, obviously more complex than that because all business deals that are worth fifty four think... million billion dollars are. Mm. I don't think the X Men in Fantastic Four. Are th- like they're not worth fifty four billion. Are you serious? They aren't. They really aren't. Not at this like, point. Well, no. Could could they really not work out a deal with Fox and get the rights to them, or at least w- w- same thing with the, they did with Sony? It was like kind of share not. it. Share Apparently not. Because they don't get- <laughs> Fox X Men movies are just making too much money to like. Oh, consider dude, doing yeah. that. Yeah, they're still really successful, even though you know they're technically, I guess, quality wise, a little bit below the Marvel stuff at this point. Besides Logan and Deadpool and Days of Future Past, and like the Apocalypse is the only like shitty one shitty that's one. been out in the past few years. Yeah, years yeah. Exactly. That that's the the only one that comes to mind. Like even going back to like First Class. Like to me, that was a good movie. Also, good. I'm sure other people, you know, have other things to say about it. But to me, that was one of the most badass. You know superhero movies because like oh you get to see um magneto unhinged like you know you get to see him going fucking crazy and i but, think the next one in that series is going to be the dark phoenix uh so yeah okay, okay so, cool i'm excited. it'll be interesting to see how they did do with that because like x-men last stand wasn't good so certainly was also, not god no no <laughs> i mean shout out to the Shout out to SF though, because Magneto did move that bridge. <laughs> oh, he did. He did, for better or worse. There's only one redeeming quality of that whole movie is yeah. he's got the Brotherhood like standing across from the X Men and they're just staring at each other towards the end of the movie. Alright, yeah, that was cool. 
that's like the only good part. Oh, and Kelsey Grammer's beast. I thought he killed it. Oh, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Shout out well, to other than those two, it, oh, God, that movie is awful. <laughs> the the X Men movies as a whole, like right now, are that they're pretty uh inconsistent at best. It's like all right, there's some like really good ones and some just like really really awful ones. So. Um, yeah. If they do end up somehow integrating into the MCU, I kind of am looking forward to a blank slate, and mm-hmm. maybe even just keeping Deadpool. I just want a cool version of Cyclops. Oh my gosh, that's all I want. That's seriously like he he yeah. not. I love Cyclops, and they just they did not do my boy right. Um, unfortunately, um, yeah. I, it will be weird to see a new Wolverine though. Yeah who who is your pick? <sighs> who would you want for new Wolverine? Because it's obviously going to happen. I hope it's someone like know. actually more comically accurate, like a short, just like really hairy, angry dude, like not Hugh right. Jackman. That's what I want. Yeah, I have a pick. It might be a hot take. All right. Or maybe not a hot take, just not popular opinion. Mm-hmm. Charlie Day. Charlie right. Day. No. From It's Always Sunny. No. That oh. is No. For Wolverine? <laughs> Are you He's serious? Scary. No. A wild card? No. That would be interesting. No. I mean, fucking put him in the gym, and Fuck, I can kind of yeah, see it. Yeah, put him it. in the gym. No, oh I my. think it, yeah, I can kind of see it. But... The, the absolutely not. <laughs> Never in a million years. Holy no. shit! No, I no, not down for that. Not I. I kind of want him to be someone else, though. I don't like know. Who, I don't know who. Kind of Wolverine. No, not Wolverine. Yeah. Just like just to be involved because I like Old him. Man but. Logan. Oh. Old Man Logan with Charlie Day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> An actual no, faithful. Old Man life. Logan will be uh, Danny DeVito. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> that, I might as well go that ridiculous all around. <laughs> that I could, I, could, I could get down with. Just right. because it's so ridiculous. But no, no, get, no, no Charlie Day. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think of somebody who could fill that role. I mean, I think the obvious answer, like I, you, I think we've all seen it on the internet a lot, is uh, Tom Hardy. Um, cause he's, he's hairy, kinda, but he's, he's hairy and, he, and he's short. So oh, that's true. He is Venom. Yeah. Or is he still going to be Venom? Yep. Oh yeah. Shooting okay. Full okay. Swing, Never mind. That, does, that doesn't work. Cause they're all in the same universe now. Venom so, is like, for some he, reason. Yeah. I don't think yeah. Venom, Venom is it. No, no, he's not. I think he's uh, stuck in the amazing it? Spider-Man universe. What the or, or, fuck? So they got this two does, different universes. No, it's, going it, off it, it can't be that. It's gotta just be its own offshoot thing. Is you know, it like kind yeah. of standalone, like no ties to anything, no fucking continuity they have to follow or anything? Yeah, yeah basically. Huh. But it, it just sucks Still, that we're not going to see Tom Holland and Venom interact ever. Probably. Fuck. That sucks. So, but whatever. I don't. I don't get how that would work. Then you can't. You can't have Venom without Spider Man. You know, they're kind yeah, of the he has opposites his own, of each other. He has solo uh, comics that they're basing yeah. it off of, but. Uh. Something that I realized about this merger not that long ago. I think it was a week or two ago. I was like, if if Deadpool shows up in an Avengers movie, and Thanos is still around, he can make the Thanos and Cable joke. Like, yeah. man, you guys look alike. Yeah. <laughs> there are so many jokes they could do with Deadpool. It's like, why can't oh, I? Like, so why many. can't I cuss? Like, why? Like, you like bleep? Like, stop bleeping me! Like, what are you doing? <laughs> PG thirteen. That's just so perfect because Thanos is Josh Brolin and Cable is Josh yeah. Brolin. So it's oh. the same dude. Like, that's it, it writes itself. Yeah, Deadpool uh, just writes see itself. Deadpool walking like on. In the streets of New York, in the background of like yeah. Avengers Four, or whatever. At a, at a chimichanga, like <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's so many jokes he could make. He could probably even, you know, talk shit about like the merger and all the about you know D- Disney buying Fox. Like, mm-hmm. I, I don't know if they would do that, but it would be funny. I thought you guys <laughs> weren't allowed to say mutant. Why did you say mutant? Like, so just yeah, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like shit like that. It writes itself. <laughs> I want Tom Holland. I want a. Deadpool Spider Man movie so bad with oh my god because that would just be incredible but we're never gonna get that well, no yeah, way cause I think in the comics they're like or Deadpool would say that Spider Man is his best friend or something like that the, right? the yeah. recent the recent Deadpool Spider Man comic run is superb highly huh. recommend like it's so well written like they bounce off each other so well I cannot recommend it enough um because. Because, I mean, Deadpool is pretty much, like, uh, the darker version of Spider-Man. Like, they both talk shit, but, like, you know, Deadpool, yeah. he takes it to a whole new level, you know? He's like, stop killing people. You can't you, you, you can't just shoot yeah. people. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, it's, it writes itself, honestly, but... How, how would you guys feel if, uh, like, Zac Efron is Wolverine? Uh, he's too young. No. I don't, I don't, I don't see that either. He's I mean, shredded. He, he does it. But yeah, he has I'm the physique. I'm thinking of, like, someone that can carry the stature of Wolverine. Mm-hmm. 
but yeah, he's probably too young. Yeah, I, they're I mean, just who who could possibly it's hard. replace Hugh as a thing, and also be comic accurate. Feeling, no matter who they pick, we're still gonna get pissed off, you know, because yeah. you know with Wolverine, it, it's always been Hugh Jackman from the beginning. You know, there hasn't been like five, six, seven different actors like there was for Batman. Exactly. Or, uh, you know, Spider Man, Spider Man, three different actors. I mean, the only other uh, actor I can think of who's stuck with the same role for, or actually, no, more include the MCU that they've kind of gone with the same actor through the whole thing, like including uh, uh, Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. You know, the first Iron Man came out ten years ago, yeah. like, but he still started ten years after Hugh Jackman. You know, exactly, because. Yeah. Hugh Jackman, well, the first X Men movie came out in like 2000, right, or so, 2001, something like that. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. Yeah, and that's a, that's a long fucking time to play one character. I it, know. It's I've funny s- how. Yeah. What's up? I would say I've seen a lot of like fan castings or whatever. If you wanted to do another Hugh Jackman esque Wolverine, you go Scott mm. Eastwood, but I don't want that either. I just don't want another. That's a good call. That's a, it's 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 a safe call, I think. Um, yeah. But that's just yeah. You'd just get another very Hugh Jackman esque, at least aesthetically. I, yeah. I honestly, I want an unknown. I want them just to get somebody, just some yeah, random know about. Person. Hopefully five three and just shredded. But that, yeah, please. Know, <laughs> it's not gonna be that. They're gonna try to get a, a like a six foot two, like another Hugh Jackman type, <laughs> just because that's what that's, <laughs> yeah. that's what people associate. But well, in the in the first X Men movie, they had to shoot like weird angles and try and make Hugh Jackman look short. And then they which, just like they I just abandoned that after that. Yeah, like, they're no, like, yeah, fuck it, it. this is too much work. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just our, our, our version of uh, Wolverine. You know, ours isn't short; he's tall. <laughs> yeah, it, which is fine. It's like obviously, I'm not I'm not totally no obtuse yeah. to change. It's all like mm-hmm. like the the old man Logan universe. He's like he's like six two like that, but um. Uh, yeah. one of these one of these times, I want to do a whole whole fan casting of a new X Men, but not this that, time. That'd be fun. Um, yep. any uh, yeah, any final thoughts on the whole Fox Disney business and whether or not it's good or bad for the industry? Or Disney's just gonna devour everything in sight? Yep. Um, probably That's scared. Probably. Yeah. We'll see. It's just, it's just gonna take a few years. Um, yep, just Mickey Mouse ears everywhere. That's what it's eventually gonna be taking over the world. Yep. All right, so now we're going to try something a little different. We usually go right into I recommend after the topics, but we're going to do a little thing where we get some questions from Twitter or the chat, like I mentioned before. So this time, I haven't been looking at the chat. I doubt anybody's watching right now, and if you are, I apologize. No. But um, yep. So we had a question from Twitter. You can mention us, like I say, every episode, yeah. at Grid Life Digest on Twitter. I'm just... I am... Uh, filling time because my twitter app isn't loading i got it for enough. you you got it Stalin. shoot yeah so at mr bad bit hey what's up joe <laughs> what up <laughs> he's asking us thanks for writing in um how excited yeah, thank you yeah thank you for being our first q and a guest honorary guest um how excited are we for monster hunter worlds and will we play together <laughs> So, now, Joe Joe is my co-host at, for the PlayStation podcast. Give him nice. a sub. I, I've I've had to uh, I've had to listen to him gush about Monster, Monster Hunter. Hunter. Worlds. Yeah, like <laughs> crazy. And I've never once played a second of it. But I I've said it on the podcast before. I absolutely love the way they are marketing the game. Uh, with these like you can play as Aloy. And have like a little dinosaur uh, with you. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Or have like Mega Man. Or have like an eight bit Mega Man as your mascot mm-hmm. while, while playing along with the Mega Man music. Like that's so cool. Capcom gets it. They know their demographic and what would make people interested in playing the game. And it 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 looks fun. So I might actually try it out. Yeah, if we can, all, if we all commit to it and like get a group, like a hunting party together, I'd be totally down. Um, I played the beta expecting, I don't know, I don't know what I was expecting. It just controls very strangely. I just was not. I was expecting a little bit more traditional uh, third person action type controls, and it's not that. Um, mm-hmm. And I just found the hunting, the actual hunting, to be pretty minimalist. I actually prefer the hunting in Witcher Three. Um, 
I just felt like I was following like these like these fireflies or whatever just to I wasn't really doing in the hunting myself, but it could change in the final game. Obviously, it was just a beta. Um, but I'm very interested. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna pick it up at launch unless we all commit and we're gonna ha- and we're gonna hunt because um, that's apparently the way it's meant to be played. So I'm undecided right now. I was going like at the turn of the year, I was pretty much guaranteed to get it. But after the beta, I'm kind of a little trepidatious at this point. Um, and I know that's like part of it, but like the o- like the the comically oversized weapons. I don't know. Like it's it has a charm to it, but also I'm like these are even past comically oversized at some points, but I know that that's part of the charm, but how about you, Eli? Are you, are you planning on picking up Monster Hunter at all? Um, When does that come out? Like in a month? It's really soon. It's February. Really soon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I might. I know I have a couple friends that were huge into it. Um, Like the last few that were on what? 3DS. So, and I've heard like, a lot of good things about Monster Hunter, especially Worlds. Everyone's talking big, big, big ups to the beta, you know. Um, so I might pick it up, probably not day one, just because I'm so like stuck in my backlog and school starting back up, and I feel like it might be another Destiny type game where it just takes over my life, yeah. and I, I don't think I'm ready for that right now, especially because I haven't even gotten back into destiny 2 since the expansion everything came out just say when you want to play that i'm down okay soon soon um but yeah i'll I'll check it out i'll see how people are feeling about it after a few weeks or so and maybe i'll pick it up all right and just just for the record it comes out january 26th so oh um, really soon soon. right around the corner honestly i'm also going to be just neck deep into Kingdom Come Deliverance, so I don't know if I'm going to have time to play it, but we'll see. Um, look out for a review on the website, I'm sure. Um, how about you, Mike? Are you interested at all? I mean, yeah, I mean for me, I, I played like a, a little bit of the monster, uh, one of the Monster Hunter demos on like 3DS like a long time ago, and I don't know, I couldn't get into it. Like, you're, you're, you're fighting this monster, and you just keep on hitting him, and then like limbs start falling off. And you're doing that th- that for a long time. It felt like I'm I'm hitting this guy for the last thirty minutes, and hardly anything's happening. I, I just I could I couldn't get behind that. But I mean, it sounds like it's more of a social thing. Like talking to you guys, like sounds like it's something you're supposed to get together with friends with and hunt monsters. Yeah. But I'm I'm sure like if I had friends to play with, or I do have friends, but like you guys, I, I, if if you guys are like, oh hey Micah, you should buy it. Like we really want you to. I'd probably get into it, you know? Yeah. But same. as of right now, not, not so much, but anything can change, you know? Like, um, I, I, I've, you know, said I wasn't f- a fan of certain games in the past. And then I, I did eventually grow to love them. But as of right now, I, yeah, I don't, not too excited for it, but who knows? I'll, I'll keep an eye on it though. I'll watch reviews and see what people think of it. So I'm I'm keeping an open mind. It's not like oh I'm like fuck Monster Hunter. I don't want anything to do with it. No, I'm just like I don't know anything. You know I can't say too much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So. Well, thank you at Mr. Badbit for the question. We're gonna move thank on. You, to yeah. I recommend or one of us recommends to the group something for the others to check out. It could be anything under the sun. Last time I recommended a movie I didn't even see yet, Samurai Cop. <laughs> what a film this was. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> what a pick. What a pick. I'm really yeah. happy about it. Um, where to even begin? That's where I'm kind of just racking my brain about. Like, where do we start with this? I'm actually very excited that you picked this because I, it's very room esque to me. It is. Yeah, it's in that same cult classic category. And, and I just saw the room maybe two, three weeks ago. Oh, congratulations! Okay. Congratulations! Yeah. Yes. Oh, it was so good. And <laughs> the first thing I saw when I went on Amazon Prime to find it was that this. Not only does this have a full franchise with it but tommy wiseau is the star of the sequels yeah or at least a sequel um (laughs) yeah yeah yeah, so but he's in the second one too yeah which it was a 25 year gap and like they they tried to (laughs) they tried to pick up immediately after each other which is just hilarious so i watched approximately five minutes of the second one before we started just just because i wanted to see if tommy shows up um i'm definitely gonna give it the full watch but man this is um Oh, I don't even... There's not even a word to describe it. It's like, it's in that so bad it's good category, but... It is. 
it felt way longer than the room was, even though they're pretty comparable in length. It's only like an hour and a half, but it felt yeah. way longer than that. I, I know exactly what you mean. Like that last scene where they're out fighting in some fucking yeah. desert. It feels like, like a half like, an hour long. Exactly. Yeah. I'm like, is this fucking over? Yeah. You know, <laughs> like the last, you know, uh, well, like hour of this movie was great or, or, you know, first hour, but this is like, uh, it's kind of boring right now. Like it, it's not even cheesy acting. It's just, cheesy uh it is cheesy you know, people, i mean yeah. it's just them like trying to fight and it and with unrealistic punching sounds and just but, like you know gripping their chest as they get shot and then there's like uh and then they go yeah. down no <laughs> blood yeah well there's blood <laughs> yeah it's like blood like only on their hand like where they press oh, it on, yeah. like, on the on the pouch or like the blood mm-hmm. pouch um <laughs> there was a, there was a lot of like uh 8-bit arcade style dialogue yeah there was definitely Shoot. Shoot him! Yeah. Hey, <laughs> yes, that's what made it hard chase. <laughs> yes, he and just kept saying shoot like, like ten times. Yeah. You got him! I got the bastard! Like, <laughs> like the ADR was like, they, like their mouths weren't moving at all. He's like, yeah, I got him. Oh, especially with the, the the Japanese actors or whatever yeah, they're supposed yeah. to be. Oh like they're barely moving their mouths, <laughs> and like they had like full, they could full, you know, form full sentences with it somehow, like with barely moving their mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that that's what cracks me up the most. What what does katana mean? It's Japanese sword. Oh <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh Japanese sword. See, that's the one thing about that movie. Like there was a lot of racist shit racist shit in that movie. I mean It was a different it time. A, as bad as I expected. It, exactly. Like it wasn't too terrible. It was it was kind of funny. But anyways, with the one where what does he say? Something about like burning his ass or whatever. He's yeah. like, Oh, your ass is already black. Yeah, he's oh, like, yeah. My ass is gonna be charcoal. Well, yeah. Okay, that's what it's it already was. black. And when he, he's threatening to take away his tremendous gift. Like, oh, <laughs> oh yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> it's like you're subtly subtly saying, like, oh I'll, I'll, all black guys have big dicks. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. hey, we, we we didn't need that, but I guess <laughs> So after I watched it, I went on IMDb and looked at the trivia and stuff. Oh man! Um, so the the guy who plays Joe, the American gladiator looking main yeah. character, the samurai, the Joe the, Samurai, samurai. who's uh, strangely ripped. <laughs> so apparently he um, he thought his filming was finished, and he got a haircut. Oh no! Oh, and and no. the director, the the director called him back for reshoots, and the director was so angry that he cut his hair, that they gave him a lady's wig. That's why. We, <laughs> and and uh, J- the Joe character, I don't know the actor's name. Yeah. Um, but he thought it was only like one scene to be reshot. No, it was like half the movie. <laughs> so That's why his hair looks hard, weird. So I was like, is that a wig? Yeah, yeah, so his hair end. goes back and forth yeah. between his real hair and his woman's wig that he was wearing. <laughs> and, That's uh, crazy. The, one of the other trivia facts was every scene in this movie was a one take. That I doesn't surprise it. me at all, yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah. as in, they did the one take and then, oh, that's it. It's like, perfect. To the next. Jeez. Got it. But it, it, it was so entertaining, though. I. Mm-hmm very entertaining that's what i loved about it like it was a good sort of bad it wasn't like a bad where it's really boring yeah. to watch no like, yeah all the cheerleaders die it is exactly. not an all cheerleaders die it, situation so, like I, I tried it i tried to take notes as i was watching and mm-hmm. i just ended up writing down like questions like why <laughs> why, why is why? any of this happening right now yeah so like at the beginning um frank uh the samurai guy's partner He's clear, clearly way too big for that car they're in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's pushed down in the front seat. It's kind of a police academy situation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, the, the, is it the van or the car they shoot that goes on fire? The blue mm-hmm. van? Yeah. The the guy who's on fire is clearly the stuntman. Like, his face is turned to the camera. Totally different. Not the same actor. Yeah. <laughs> He's like doused in like what or fireproof like gel or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then the nurse scene. Okay. Do you remember the nurse scene early on? Do you the, like yeah. what you see? Dialogue? I, I actually oh. have that scene pulled up right now. I'd love to do a dramatic reading of it for okay, you. Yeah, um, just because it's so ridiculous. It. Yes, yes. Please. Do you like what you see? I love <laughs> what I see. Would you like to touch what you see? 
<laughs> yes. Yes, I would. Uh, would you like to go out with me? Uh, yes, I would. Would you like to fuck me? <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> this is without all the reaction shots from Frank. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, Frank is my favorite part of this whole thing. Yes. Like, well, then let's see what you've got. Investigates his bulge. Doesn't interest me. Nothing there. Nothing there? Just exactly what would interest you? Something the size of a jumbo jet? Have you been circumcised? Yeah, I have. Why? Your doctor must have cut a large portion off. No, uh... Th- this, is, this, is, this is my favorite line right here. No, uh... He was, a uh, He was a good doctor. Good doctors make mistakes, too. That's why they have insurance. Getting close to her. Don't worry. I got enough. It's big. I want bigger. Oh. Walks away. Like that. That whole scene, just like with the cuts off, oh with the God. where where Frank was just looking at the camera. Like it. Oh man, that was definitely the high point for me. And that that is like one of the worst hospitals I've ever seen. Yeah, because... <laughs> it looked just like a hallway. Yeah, it's and it's right hallway. next to a dental office. <laughs> really, it's like medical uh, a medical office compound, not a real hospital. Uh, shout out to the police captain, though, because he yes, was, I was just gonna say some real conviction there. Yeah, I should yeah, fire you both. Pissed off at everyone. His, the scene with him and the lawyer. Oh my god. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. <laughs> you wanted none of that shit. Yeah. Like and like and um, he, like he kisses on the forehead. He's like fuck you, and then he just like smiles. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then they come back and like yeah. oh, is he, he's just getting ready for round two. And then that uh, the fight in the in the parking lot with the cars, where uh, I forgot the the dude's name, but the guy with the really big face and the beard. Yeah, yeah, big um, big face is a good way to describe it. Big face. Yeah. So he, uh, about that guy. So when he was sending his goons out to attack them, like he waited for them to get handcuffed, and then he sent the other one out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, like I feel like if he sent them all out at the same time, that would have been a better strategy. And just shoots them all. Yeah, and, and then, then he, he shoots the one big black dude like seven times. Like <laughs> he's just like he, ah. He stands in the same place. Yeah, I love and it. And then throws the grenade under a car. He just rolls it. it. Doesn't it doesn't check to see if he got the bodies. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like oh. um, ex- just emotionless the whole time too. Just like just like just staring blankly at it. Killing his own men. Yeah, code of silence. It's true. You can't uh, let them talk. Oh my god! And then the oh, I forgot what the other police officer's name was. So there was there was uh, the woman, Joe, Samurai, yeah, Frank, Peggy, the girl cop, which they actually called her at some point in the movie. The girl cop. Yikes. Yeah. Yeah. And then the oh, other yeah. dude, I forgot Johnson. His name. Johnson. But there was a scene where they were going after oh, the stereotypical god. Chinese martial artist dude. Yeah. Yeah. And. Peggy turns to him yes. and says, hey, do you want to fuck? And then yeah. goes, Shut up! <laughs> we, 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 got no, we got nothing better to do right now. Want to fuck? He's like, shut up. <laughs> oh, and that God. was so quick, he just started, shut up. Shut up. Like, <laughs> like it was established yeah, like, she's like, This happens every day. Yeah, it's like, this is just a thing that happens. Yeah. It's like, alright, we're out on patrol. Want to fuck? No, stop, Peggy. <laughs> that's, and, all, that's all I do. Yeah. And that fight scene was my favorite fight scene in the whole movie. Oh, Joe and and the Yamashita, I think his name was. Yeah, like out in the field. Because, right? but the field changed three times. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like he goes under like a piece of brush and then comes out. It's like all empty. Like, yeah, there was like bamboo sticks in one scene, and then they, there's cactuses, and then <laughs> it's a very diverse area. Like... Yeah. So, I I want to bring up the fact that um, I watched this in a Starbucks. The okay. um, Ideal viewing and conditions. I was not, honestly, no, because I had no idea there were so many sex scenes and so such many long ones. Uh, mm-hmm. um, watching it on. They left nothing so, to the imagination. No, no, no. Was, <laughs> like the last one with Joe and like the girl and the that he meets with the Japanese people and like when yeah. they're swimming. I'm in love. That that was extremely erotic. It, it could have been. The beginning of a porn, if you, if I didn't know what was going on, yeah. Um. So yeah, I I talked about this before the show, but I gotta 
I got to say thank you to Windows 10 for making it possible to close out the, not close, but like minimize the window and then just hover over like the Chrome box on the bottom so I could see like the tiny little mm-hmm. screen. That'll just make just you look creepier. Window. Just like, oh yeah, it's a little, little tiny box. Oh yeah. my god. It's not a good situation either way, but I just say like if someone, no, if someone caught you looking at the tiny little box, probably probably not a great look. It would just be harder to see that than the full screen, you know, sex. Yeah. In the Starbucks. So much in the Starbucks. I mean, they probably they probably have to monitor people using their Wi-Fi for nefarious reasons, like Matt. <laughs> um, oh, oh yeah. Callback. And how how did Joe get a house like that after only being there for a for week? week? It's like also yeah, like how did he, he didn't know, know that how, was his house? How did he know Frank? Like they they acted like they knew each other for years and they were like you know like best yeah. buddies. I also love how Joe's couch is just the cushions on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, it That's doesn't have a couch is. frame or anything. It's just cushions on the floor and pillows. That's all he needs. And they, ju- they just happen to have matching bathing suits at the place for yeah. both of them. Yeah. Joe's Speedo. That Shout out to that. Speedo. Oh, man. But I think the thing that with that movie is like they kind of knew it wasn't going to be that great. So they just shoehorned a bunch of sex scenes in there. Like, oh, at Did least this will sell. Like, this good. What? Did Wait, they know it wasn't going to be? Like, I don't know. I mean, in my head, that's what it would be. Like, yeah, this, this movie's not going to be great. Our actors kind of suck. Uh, we're just going to deal with it while we can and put a bunch of sex scenes in it. Like, they kind of did with The Room. Yeah, so. but like, it still wasn't as awkward as The Room. Like there No, were... that, that that was the epitome no, yeah. of awkwardness it's for like, sex scenes. Because yeah. obviously Joe is like a, a attractive guy. I guess yeah. so those like locks, man. Well. Just, just those fucking that hair. At least when, yeah, it, at least when I, it was, I was real. I was impressed by his hair. Like they, they it wasn't bad looking except for when it looked like a lady's wig. <laughs> just like, yeah, just like the whole the whole denim, like the whole blue denim outfit. It's like that is nineteen ninety one. What a badass! <laughs> what a badass! I, this this movie looks way older than uh, it was made in nineteen ninety one. Yeah, I thought it was like early eighties, seventies. Yeah, yeah. It, it it had that kind of feeling to it. But yeah, um, man. Any other final shout outs? Because like, there's so much to unpack on this one. Uh, there's, so, there's so much. Like the undercover cop joke at the end. Yeah. Why are oh, you under yeah. there? So I would undercover great. cop. Oh my god, that's <laughs> actually my favorite joke in the whole movie. Frank's the best. Frank is the best character, and he's back Frank in the, is the best. He's in the second yeah. one too, and he 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 has like the same look, but he's like 25 years older. So oh, nice. yeah. Uh, who guards the perimeter of a compound with a katana? <laughs> that's a very good point. <laughs> He was just walking around the outside of the compound just holding a, a katana like that yeah. for it. And then at the end of the the last thing I want to say is at the end of the movie I, I said to myself for a movie called Samurai Cop there's very little sword fighting. I was very disappointed. Very yep. And then the very next second there's a sword fight. Yeah. At the end with the, the two guys. I was like, I know this is going to be the payoff but I was hoping to see like some some like really shitty Kill Bill action. Yeah. Like, yeah. Even that would have been fucking great. Take, <laughs> taking on the whole the whole gang with like of with guns, but just this guy with the katana the whole time. I was like I, that's what I was expecting. Like slicing and I didn't bullets get in half. Yeah, like yeah, doing some crazy yeah. shit. Like they're like somehow uh, and, all the bullets miss. Yeah, and then the the scene where they're fighting in the car in the parking lot with the cars. Yeah. And that one dude comes out with the sword. I was like, oh, it's happening. He just, he's just standing there, and then, <laughs> yeah. and then Frank shoots him. Yeah. He just shoots him, and that's it. You're gonna fight him unarmed. And he's like, he just like waves his hand and just blows him away. I love that. Like, <laughs> God, everything, every scene that Frank was in was gold. No, oh, yeah, I uh, completely agree. Man, yeah, no, I, I hope, I hope two has uh, more sword fighting in it because he's out for yeah. blood, revenge story on that one. Um, yeah. I would pay good money to see this in a theater. Oh, I'd love it. it just just like the room. Example. Just like the room. Oh, yeah. 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 The room is like by Do far my feature. Yeah. Yeah. The room. Feature. The room, the room yeah. in Samurai Cop. No, oh, that doesn't get much better <laughs> yeah. than that. God, That'd the, be amazing. The room on its own was my, like, by far my favorite theater experience probably ever. Just everyone was participating in all the jokes and everyone was laughing. Um, but having two back to back, that'd be too good. Too good. It yeah. would be. Oh, man great time <laughs> well mm. if you haven't go check out samurai cop on amazon prime and its sequel and the riff track and like several other things that it has available even just on amazon i'm sure there's more um i'd love to see a uh trilogy of this 
eventually. I know the last one was in 2015, so it's clearly uh, experiencing a little bit of a resurgence. But um, hopefully, we get like a, a disaster artist version of this. Oh, I'd love to see like the Damn. making, the ma- right. or, or just like a documentary, just like you know about the making of this. Like that would be awesome. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, very very fun movie. Uh, only an hour and a half. Not much of a time seek, even though it feels like three hours sometimes. <laughs> um, but just the slow, just the slow gunfights and the really just cheesy dialogue. It's all it, it's all worth it in the end. Um, so for this week's recommendation. We're going to throw you a little bit of a curveball. Kyle, do you have anything cool we should check out? Oh, man. Yeah, just uh, dropping the bomb. Something cool. Something cool, we something we funny. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's something on Netflix that you should watch. Tom Segura has a new special. Um, oh, that's but we already we already did comedy. There's also uh, that, that Bitcoin... Uh... Documentary, documentary yeah i watched a while ago that was pretty great there's also the no, um no. uh what uh, i was saying just go watch black mirror if you haven't black mirror that's a great oh, one yes that's actually a really good I, one because I've, I've been meaning to i've met a couple of people fairly recently because i'm a substitute teacher and i get to talk to the different subs when i'm in class yeah and they have no idea what black mirror is it's like guys yeah go watch and all the episodes are good on their own so just pick a couple, and if they're, you know, they're your style, then definitely go for the, for, the rest of them. Like uh, White Bear is fantastic. Um, that's the one where you feel bad for the main character. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So, so like the the twists are really good in it. Uh, San Junipero made me cry like a baby. Uh, cause that's <laughs> like the only very happy, kind of ending in a Black Mirror episode. Uh, they're all great, so yeah, go check out some Black Mirror. That's a great start one. Start from the beginning, I'd say. Yeah, definitely start from the beginning. Okay. Well, in that case, go check out one or two. Let's just go. Let's let's go. Let's go the first like couple. Do you want to go a couple? The episodes? first season's like four episodes. So oh, okay. That's, 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 just, that's, doable. Each. that's okay. That's totally doable, honestly. Yeah. If, let's, yeah do let's just yeah, we'll let everyone know like this week so they can just knock out one a night or something. All right. Because I can I can get past the first episode for me, but like now I have more of a motivation to do so. Yeah. I you mean, really it, say it's why? Kind of the, it, it's just kind of the the thing with uh tv shows the first episode is kind of like you know putting in all the story or you're kind of building up to what it actually is so for well, me it's what, hard I would, to... what i would say to you is the first episode that i saw was mm-hmm. play test uh-huh. season three. Oh, it's, it's so that's what sold game, you it's the video game vr episode oh that sounds interesting check that one out because if you like that one then you're gonna like the rest of the episodes I okay agree. cool let's just make it that episode and then we can go. go on from there. All right. So, in that case, go check out see the, the season three of Black Mirror playtest. Yes, I believe that's what that episode's called. Go check Sweet. that out. We're gonna be talking about that in depth next week. Holy shit, we've gotten to the end, and this is a, episode twenty one of Grid Life Digest. Thank you so much Old for listening. Drink. Old enough <laughs> to drink in podcast years. You can head over to gridlifedigest.com to see all the content in one place and consider subscribing. On iTunes, Google Play, and YouTube, so you never miss a topic. We'll be back next Wednesday with another conversation. Thank you so much, Kyle. You were wonderful. Thank, Thank you. You Thank provided you that wonderful wisdom on how to deal with internet toxicity and a wonderful recommendation for Black Mirror Season 3 playtest. Excited. It's going to be fun. Great. Let's do it. Go watch Samurai Cop if you haven't already. Yes. See you next week. Movie. Bye. <laughs>